from a jam-packed Hawthorne Theater in the heart of beautiful Portland, Oregon, Prestige Wrestling proudly presents The Last Stop on the Road to Roseland. This is Alive 2. My name is Jordan Castle, joined in the booth by the incomparable Cody Von Whistler. Cody, what a night we have in store. Well, I was about to say how excited I was, and then these two tunes come out. This room is loud, loud as hell for the, for the Heat boys and Eddie Pearl almost tumbling over the rope through the excitement. Well, Cody, it's a hot crowd as you can hear and a hot night of action on tap. Unfortunately, Heat coming to fruition all too literally as the former prestige wrestling tag team champions Ricky Gibson and Eddie Pearl gracing us with their presence in the opening contest. That's that's one way to put it. I think this is a better way to put it. I agree. Of course, the last time we were here in the Hawthorne Theater for Alive, the Midnight Heat picking up a dubious victory oh, yeah. over the Brothers Divine. Tonight, head to head with a team they are no strangers to, a team they have faced and, well, defeated before in prestige wrestling action. Is it hot in here or is it just these guys? And you. We got Say Perez, Spencer Scott, the Flaming Aces. prefer the Flames to the Heat. These hot young upstarts, though not picking up a victory against the Hammer Brothers, last time we were here at the Hawthorne Theater for a live, looking very, very impressive in defeat, hoping to change their fortunes tonight, but it's not just Gibson and Pearl they have to contend with. Nope. We got three teams competing in this matchup, and I'm familiar with two of them, but this next team about to make their entrance, I'm excited to finally get to call one of their contests. You're more familiar with this next group than I am. Very, very familiar, and with good reason. They have been setting the West Coast on fire now, bringing their talents to the PN Dub. Feel the anticipation. Last time we saw Danny Rose and Ricky G. What is Eddie Pearl yelling at us about? I can't even understand what he's saying. What? Well. Wise with the Midnight Heat. Hopefully they're not in our corner, but nevertheless, Cody, as I was saying, Ricky G and Danny Rose, the last time we saw them in a prestige wrestling ring was alongside tag team partner Adrian West, taking on the dream team of Kevin Blackwood, prestige wrestling world oh, champion oh. Alex Shelley, and Tiger Mask. But right now, we're not waiting. We're getting things started hot, hot and heavy, hot and furious here. And Jordan, we're seeing some teamwork here from the Midnight Heat. Oh, sorry, momentary teamwork there from Midnight Heat as they are now just being shoved around and the flaming aces are standing tall in the opening moments of this match. Let's go. Referee Devin Campbell has to regain control here. That is Ricky G, one half of Los Suavecitos currently in the ring with Spencer Scott, now Zay Perez, frequent tags, the name of the game. Playboy with a beautiful drop kick, jumping off of his partner and Scott dropping the elbow directly to the spine. Perez, the legal man, it's the cover, but only a two count. Not just yet, Jordan, it's gonna take more than that. 
but you can bet your butt that the Flaming Aces are ready to get under the skin and into the minds of their opponents here. Something easier said than done. Whoa, okay. Using the athleticism to his advantage. He's not the biggest dog in the game, but he's certainly quick and he's certainly tenacious is Zay Perez. We saw that much against the much larger Hammer Brothers last time we were here at Hawthorne. That's true, he's got some bite. Oh, wait a minute, whoa. I thought that uh, Danny Rose, excuse me, Ricky G, was looking for a slingshot rebound there. Instead, Ricky Gibson sending him tumbling outside the ring, but now into the waiting arms of the Playboy, maybe regretting that move. That was a Ricky on Ricky crime, and I hate it. Sunset flip. Shoulders down, but in comes Scott. Psyching him out with a big basement drop kick. Can't even keep track of who the legal man is here. I don't think Reverie Devin Campbell can either. This is absolute madness. This is insanity. This is only our opening contest. Ooh, and into the corner. The hard way goes Perez. That is the thing I might not like, the attitude, the brashness, the rule bending, or dare I say, rule breaking of the Midnight Heat, but they are an excellent tag team. There's a reason beyond that rule breaking that they are four prestige oh. wrestling tag team champions, but hell, Cody, we may be seeing future prestige wrestling tag team champions here. And remember, in these multi-team tag matches, anyone can tag in whoever they want to become the legal combatant of their team. And just like that, Gibson's out. Yeah, and you might ask, why would you tag someone in who's not your tag team partner? Don't you always want one of your tag team partners in the ring? And my answer would be, yes, of course, that is ideal. But you don't always have that luxury. Sometimes it's better to escape your opponent and, and allow two members of the opposition in the ring at one time than get covered or submitted yourself. And look at this, the rule breaking of Los Suavecitos. I, I wouldn't say rule breaking, rule bending, Cover. yes. Bending the spine of Zay Perez in half off that impact. That is Danny Rose in the ring. Again, neither of these men. I like these guys. They are fantastic athletes. Again, saw them in action alongside Adrian Quest, taking Alex Shelley, the Prestige Wrestling World Champion, who we will see in action later on tonight, defending that championship against one Alan Angels. Your best friend. Kevin Blackwood and the legendary Tiger Mask. No, they did not pick up the victory, Cody. But that is not an easy task, hanging toe-to-toe -to -toe with three of the very best in the game. So you're saying that this team has a lot to prove tonight, not only with uh, trying to pick up the W, but with their Pacific Northwest Shh. debut. Whoa, okay. Shoulders down, especially against the Midnight Heat, former prestige wrestling tag team champions, and the Flaming Aces quickly becoming favorites of the Pacific Northwest faithful. I mean, what would it mean for Los Suavecitos to come into Portland, their first time here in Portland for prestige wrestling, and defeat two men who have really been pillars of tag team wrestling in this territory? It would be an impressive impact, that is for sure, but the wild card here, pun intended, is the Flaming Aces. They are still in this matchup, at least for now, as Perez taking a beating in the corner. As soon as you say it, commentators curse in full effect. Perez with a big elbow to the face of Rose. Up and over we go. Rose trying to meet him with a German suplex. He's fingertips away from Scott. Is he going to get it, Cody? That rocked him. Oh, but look at that. I'm not sure if our camera's caught it. Eddie Pearl with a blind tag. Not sure if Rose even realized it now. Nothing precious about this. Spencer Scott's pissed. Behind referee Devin Campbell's back, the double team from the Midnight Heat. Spencer's got to maintain composure here. King of Dom. Oh. Eddie Pearl, I want to point out, giving himself haircuts now, and it is very, very apparent. Yeah, he also wanted to say that he gets laid more than anybody in the ring. I don't believe it, but he insisted that I, that I relay that information. That's what he was yelling at before the match. Right now it's Gibson laying the elbow drop into Perez. Only a two. And Jordan, we've mentioned this so many times and we're gonna keep talking about it. The Midnight Heat are a fantastic tag team. Excellent. But the fact that they, they, they use these underhanded tactics just, just grinds the gears of me, you, of management, and pretty much everyone in the room here. No, Cody, I'll say until I'm blue in the face, as blue as their trunks and tights. Hold on! Oh, a dominator assisted with the elbow by Pearl, hooking the leg. I would not have been surprised if that was it, Jordan. Again, Zay Perez, he is resilient. He does not know the meaning of the word quit. Nice brain buster variation there from Pearl, floating over into a lateral press. What a kick out from Perez. As I was saying, it's part of what makes it so frustrating that the Midnight Heat are rule breakers, that they're, they're pushing referees, but hell, 
Devin. the threes push back. Damn it, Devin. I love it. I don't think the Midnight Heat love it. Ricky Gibson, the illegal man, taking Zay Perez back to their corner. A little Devin Campbell chant broke out for a second. That's there. a first. Ho a hopefully a last. I love you, Devo. All love aside, Perez is in some serious trouble here, Jordan. He has been in this matchup for way too long. He desperately needs to... Nice backbreaker there from Gibson into a cover. Broken up at the last second by Rose. I'm not sure if Perez had the way with all the kick out of that one, Cody. Very, I like I was saying, Perez has been in this matchup for very, a very, very long time. He desperately needs a tag out. And not even his own partner at this point. He's just got to get out of this one. Well, I think there's also some desperation from the Midnight Heat. We talk about the Flaming Aces having something to prove. Los yeah. Suavecitos having something to prove after their recent losses. How about the Midnight Heat? I mean, they've been consistently Jordan. inconsistent. Look at this, Perez, fingertips away from Scott, just as you say it, Cody. Like Curl a, in. Like a Renaissance painting. He was so close to God, to freedom. Can he do it? Nice Can he make it to his kick. Jordan. Gibson looking to make his presence felt again, but unfortunately now Scott not in the not in his corner. Yeah, the Midnight Heat trying for the numbers game once again, but this time it is Ricky G again. More Ricky on Ricky violence, but finally Perez makes the tag. And the hot shot Spencer Scott is lighting up. The hot shot in like a true house of fire. Equal opportunity, Suavecitos and Heat alike. What a flatliner. Somebody check Ricky's pulse. Uh-oh. Same for Danny, TKO into his own partner, leg hooked, but only a two. Unbelievable, Jordan. That was as close as you can get without taking it home. Spencer Scott's got to keep his composure. He's got to keep this momentum up. The crowd is behind him. All right, now he's doing a damn fine job of it, trading European uppercuts to both Suavecitos. But this time it's the numbers game of the freshest essays out the trenches. Spine to pine, but Perez jumping in to try and make the save, but instead is placed up in a fireman's carry. Oh, wait a minute, Jordan. We've seen this before from Los Suavecitos. Double foot stomp, but it's Spencer Scott catching Danny Rose at the power bomb. Ricky G with the super kick. Scott sidesteps it, bicycle knee. Gets the waist lock, but into the ropes. Oh, Connor. Shoulders down, but broken up by Rose. Reversed into a cover. And Suavecito steal it. Now that's... Again, Cody, take nothing away from Los Suavecitos. Less than 24 hours ago, becoming the inaugural West Coast Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions. They are a very, very formidable tag team. But here in the PNW, I mean, that has to be considered an upset. What a weekend. Oh, no. Ricky, oh, Ricky G with something to say. What, what is this? The, the top he dropped off? Where was the iPad? I'm afraid. Get that out of here, get that out of here. Ugh. I'm afraid to ask. Jordan, every single team brought their A game here in that matchup, and we still have an entire show to go. That was match number one. Both prestige wrestling championships on the line. World and tag team goal to be decided. A war to settle a score. Last man standing between Jaden and Jordan Cruz. All of that and so much more. But Cody, we talk about the Midnight Heat not garnering momentum tonight, but they're going to need it because in just a few weeks' time at Roseland 8, they go head to head with Dirty Breeze. Ooh, Fashion Police are about to pull those boys over. Hey, what's good? The freshest little exit out the trenches. The hardest as ever. Danny Rose, Rick and Dre, the seat throws up in the Pacific Northwest, huh? And hey, we've been bugging prestige for a minute now. Hey, let us through the door in the Pacific Northwest. We want to take over that territory too. What's good, huh? What happened tonight when they finally stopped being scared? Not only did we beat the Flaming Aces, but we beat 
The Midnight Heat, what's up? What's up, one of the best tag teams in the world, what's good? Hey, last couple shows they've been stacking the deck against us, huh? Legends like Tiger Mask, Alex Shelley, big fools like the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Hey, we even got a tag title match against C4, who are this, this close to being, you know what I'm this saying? This close. But nah, see, we play chess, huh? You fools are playing checkers. Straight up, eh? We've been banging on the Pacific Northwest for prestige for a minute, huh? Now we're here to take over. What's good? Citos controlamos todos now. What's good? Who gonna stop us? Cito territory. What's good? Los suavecitos controlamos todo. Straight up, bro. Shout out to homies and all that. If you don't know, you should. You should. And if you do, you know that's Rockin' Ricky Gibson. I'm Precious Eddie Pearl, and we are the hottest thing going today, the Midnight Heat. And I gotta say, we are getting very, very frustrated. Frustrated is an understatement. Since 2016, Precious Eddie Pearl and Rockin' Ricky Gibson, the Midnight Heat, have tagged together. And we have revived the tag team division in the Pacific Northwest. We are the top guys around here and everybody knows it, but every time we turn around, somebody is out there trying to take our spot. Somebody is out there trying to move us out of the way and take that glory. Frustrated is an understatement, but you better believe that on April 14th, we're taking that frustration to Dirty Breeze. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where you're going. On April 14th, you are in Roseland. You are in Portland. You are in our territory. And the Midnight Heat will not step back and let you take our spot. You can sleep on the Midnight Heat, but you better not expect us to tuck you in. And we've said this many times before. And we mean it once again. Beat the heat. If you can! Let's throw it back to Evie Kiyoshi for the ring introductions. I like that beard. He is styling and profiling. The SoCal hippie finds her way to prestige wrestling for the first time ever. Cody, I would argue, I should say, I would have argued that Chin Savani would be at a disadvantage as a regular, excuse me, a relative unknown, a SoCal wrestler here in the PNW against one of Portland's finest, against a hometown gal in Amira. But after Los Suavecitos picked up the victory at our opening contest, I mean, all that goes out the window. That's not necessarily the case. Anything can and will happen in the wild world of wrestling. That's why I love it. Prepare to get Riz. L, not W. Well, Cody, you talk about how anything can and will happen. Anything can and did happen back at Roseland 7 as Amira waged war in a Rose City death match. Pick up the victory against Drexel, but talk about a star-making performance. Amira truly showing that she is hardcore. The fact that she's still alive, still breathing, still walking, still wrestling, that says a lot about the Tower of Power as Jin. Wow. Allegedly. Now, Savani not mentioned mincing words here. Again, we often see this with outsiders, especially against hometown favorites, especially against local heroes, of which Amira certainly is. Getting ahead of the crowd, knowing you're gonna be the less popular wrestler, knowing you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a lack of that perpetual third man that the audience, the prestige faithful, really can be, and instead bucking that tradition. There you go. Dive head first into it if you can't beat it. Right now, Amira getting pulled out of the corner by referee Buddy Ruth. I think that pissed Amira off a little bit. Maybe exactly oh, yeah. what Jin Savani was intending. I, I thought hippies were supposed to be nice. What's going on here? She's a bit sassy. Nothing bit nice spicy. about that kick and nothing nice about this suplex taking Savani down to the mat. Of course, we talk about Rosalind 8 coming your way April 14th live on IWTV. 
Amira will be in action, arguably the biggest test of her young career against the Afropunk, Trisha Dora. Yeah, but she's got to get through this match tonight. I know she's got Roseland on her mind, but she should not take Jin Savani lightly. Yeah, cannot afford to overlook the cultish cultish ways of one Jin Savani here, but looking very impressive off that shoulder block. Now I know Jin Savani is a big fan of China, ninth wonder of the world, one of the strongest women's wrestlers ever to compete. So you gotta think she came into this one maybe a little bit prepared because Amira definitely matches the strength of almost any wrestler out there. And right now, the Tower of Power looking for a wheelbarrow. Nice, Casadora arm drag there. And just as I was saying, she's full of power. Amira can also move with the best. She's a, definitely got the double trouble. Well done by the Prestige Faithful. She's picked up victories over the likes of Zaya Brookside and Sumi Sakai and Unagi Sayaka here in the Prestige ring, hoping to add Jin Savani to the list off that cannonball. She's got the Zoomies. And I'm not just talking about Goose or Cat. Or Stella. No! Oh. Can't forget about Stella. Gotta show Stella love, but no love lost from Savani. Escaping to the Ooh, outside. Okay. And bringing Amira there to meet her. Wow! Very nasty impact. Seemed cracking Amira on the tip of her skull on that ring post. You know, people always talk about the apron being the hardest part of the ring. But it they ain't. Forget, they forget about the solid steel ring post. As Jin Savani now mocking the prestige faithful. Uh, Amira is rocked inside the ring, Cody. She, she tried to mount a vertical base there and, and just crumpled, landing the jawbreaker there, but she's got those donut eyes all glazed no, over. No way. Amira looking for a German souffle, but oh, Jin does not want to go for that ride. I did not blame her. Yeah, looking, gonna be all she's doing now, looking up at the lights as Savani lands the big clothesline. Just sheer disrespect from Savani. Now going for the cover. Not enough. And similarly to Los Suavecitos for Jin Savani, her first time in the Pacific Northwest, her first time in Portland, Oregon, wrestling not just for prestige, but period, full stop. No doubt a victory against a hometown hero like Amira would do wonders for her. A rock in a hard place as Amira takes a forearm to the face, snapmare, and a punt kick to the spine. I think the kick is good. Sick, twisted smile on her face as she lands the neck breaker. Curiously, not capitalizing, going for more offense, now going for the cover. Not enough. Shades of Mr. Perfect with that uh, seated neck whip there. Yeah, but you gotta wonder if Jin Savani had capitalized off the neck whip immediately, had gone for the cover immediately, could she potentially have match one? We'll never know. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Either way, Savani here powering back into this one, just forearming the spine of Amira. It's very Man. rare to see Amira overpowered. Again, when she lacks in stature, she more than makes up for in strength and muscle mass, but you wouldn't know it the way Savani is just clobbering her here. What do you mean lacks in stature? Amira is like six seven. That's true. Six five on her tippy toes. Escaping the go. suplex attempt. Get the waist lock applied. Oh, went to the well one too many times with that reversal. Did Savani? Thinking German once again, but Savani using that big strong base to escape. Uh oh, Amira now. What's a blue thunder bomb of sorts from Jin Savani? Cover once again. And a kick out. You can see the frustration building. But then, for a split second, she was frustrated, but then you saw that smile upon the face of Jin Savani as she is not letting this prestige crowd get under her skin at all. Perhaps letting referee buddy, excuse me, get under her skin, diverting her attention, if only for the moment. Now continues to land the shots. The crowd firmly, firmly behind Amira. It is difficult to truly articulate if you're watching at home. You gotta buy a ticket, prestigewrestling.net. Anytime we are in the Rose City, the connection that this crowd has with Amira is palpable and unlike anything you have ever heard. Amira using that energy from the crowd to get back in this one. Third time's the charm. She's not done. We talk about rule of thirds, maybe thinking three amigos. Two Germans. Looking for the hat trick, possibly. Viva la raza, Amira. 
in the Eddie Guerrero tribute gear, no less. Da Souple, baby. The tide has turned, and Amira is back in control. Butterflies the arms. Not quite. But again, Savani too big, too strong, and perhaps has laid too much offense in on Amira. You see that there, stepping on the toes of Amira to get out of that one. Did Savani and a nice bicycle kick to the face. Tower of Power is feeling it. Can she get the W Riz that Amira needs oh, to get on. back in this? Savani may be thinking war on pigs or variation of the air raid crash, but Amira reverses into the sleeper hole. Savani breaking it up in the corner. Savani really using that corner as a, as a weapon here. Yeah, using the entire ring as a weapon has Ooh. Savani, but it's Amira using her feet as a weapon. And the Tower of Power is thinking about getting just a little high here in the Hawthorne. Cross body! She can fly. Amira, the W Riz. Maybe thinking, thinking. Misery Riz this! Amira picks up the victory! Shadora, April 14th at the Roseland Theater in Portland, Oregon. That is what you are going toe to toe with. She may not match you in years of experience. Hell, she may not match you in technical expertise, but Amira more than makes up for it in heart and connection with the prestige faithful. That is one I am really, really looking forward to, Cody. So loud in here. Stephanie! The Amira that went in to that Rose City death match is not the same Amira that came out. And I proved that to everybody tonight at the Hawthorne. Jin Savani put up a good fight, but she is no match for the Tower of Power Amira. Rose and eight, Trisha Dora, I know what you're capable of. I've seen you on AEW Collision, ROH, you've gone up against Japanese legends and so many other incredible athletes. But you're not going up against the little girl that went in to that ring with Drexel. You're going up against the Tower of Power and I'm ready for anything. We talk a lot about hidden gems in the world of professional wrestling, Cody, to the point where it's almost become a cliche in and of itself. To me, there is no truer personification of that trope than this man. So talk a lot about people having so-called chips on their shoulder. And after G-Sharp, a veteran of 15 years, was dominated and decimated by Jordan Cruz, a man much his junior, back at a moment of violence, he absolutely has something to prove here in Portland. Well, he's gonna, he's gonna have a hard time doing so because it's his opponent tonight, this man right here. Nothing has to be said about Daniel Makabe because you already know. For the first time in over two months, Daniel Makabe returns home to the square circle. It's no secret, 
the sun is setting on the prestigious career of one Daniel Maccabe. But before he calls it a day, he has singles action tonight against G-Sharp. And then on April 14th at Roseland 8, a technical wrestling dream match against Zack Sabre Jr. ZSJ, as they call him up uh, north of the border. What do you say? ZSJ. They say their Z's weird up in Canada. Referee Bradley signals for the bell. Daniel Maccabe looking for the show of respect. Rematch handshake, but Ooh. Gregory Sharp, uh, he's not feeling it. Like you mentioned moments ago, um, Daniel Maccabe slowly winding down. This is one of the stops on Daniel Maccabe's farewell tour. He doesn't got a lot left in him, so he's making him count. And can G Sharp make Daniel Maccabe remember him for the rest of his days? As Sharp here quickly counters the hammer lock, but Maccabe is never going to leave a submission locked in for too long. Here we go. Using the legs. A technical genius is Maccabe. Gregory Sharp may have the power. Shoulders down. He may have the speed, but Maccabe has to rely on that ground game, Cody. Maccabe now quickly gets his way out of that one, bending the arm in a way it's not supposed to go as Sharp bridging, bridging to avoid that arm being dislocated or broken at most. Of course, Sharp Ooh. technically sound in his own right, as we're seeing, hanging with the master. Jockin' for position. Call this the feeling out process for a reason. It really tells the story of where the match is set to go. If Sharp gets the advantage, Maccabe is fighting from underneath for the rest of the matchup. Likewise, vice versa, if Maccabe gets the advantage, Sharp is fighting underneath for the rest of the matchup. You really, really, really need to set the pace in your favor in the early moments. Again, going for the handshake. No. Again, Gregory Sharp not giving it. Sharp is not looking to make friends here tonight. Like I mentioned, he's looking to make Daniel Maccabe remember him for the rest of his days. When we talked to Daniel Maccabe earlier on tonight, we asked, what do you want out of these last few months? What do you want as you're, you're writing the final chapter of your journey as a professional wrestler? And he told us he wants to cement his legacy as one of the top technical wrestlers. Oh, oh wow! Gregory Sharp getting the advantage here. Really, really regaining control of the head. Maybe Daniel Maccabe has his mind set on the prize that is Zack Sabre Jr. coming up at Roseland, but tonight he's got to get through G Sharp. As I was saying, wants to cement his legacy as one of the top technical wrestlers to ever participate in the sport. He's won titles and traveled the world. He's done all that. He wants to cement the legacy, and a win against Gregory Sharp heading into that dream match at Roseland 8 Ooh. would go a very, very long way in doing just that. Hold on, Cody, that... That was an attempt at an octopus stretch. Close, but no cigar as Sharp has a counter for Maccabe. Maccabe has a counter for Sharp. Not stop reversals from these two. And both of these competitors know how detrimental it would be to, to, to have a hold like that locked in, especially in the center of the ring. Nowhere to go, nowhere to, to get that reprieve, to get that escape. Maccabe rolls him through, but G Sharp using the ring awareness. Getting his foot on the bottom rope, and to those who don't know, if you make it to the ropes via in, while you're in a submission or a pinfall, that's a break. And right now, G Sharp rethinking his strategy on the floor, maybe rethinking his whole life, who knows? Yeah, rolling to the outside, trying to wiggle some feeling back in, into that left arm is G Sharp. Again, the collar and elbow tie up. This one has been very, very even keel between these two, Cody. Thus far, it's been neck and neck. Daniel Maccabe looking to make G Sharp A flat. Oh, Maccabe just grinding at the face of Sharp here. Look at that. Shoulders down, Sharp has gotta be careful. He doesn't get caught in a pinning predicament. All it takes is three seconds when you're caught in one of those submission holds. Sometimes it takes even less than that as Daniel Maccabe fighting for that arm there. G Sharp does not want to let it go. I do not blame him. Maccabe, no doubt, uh -oh. trying to soften Sharp up for the Maccabe lock, his version of cattle mutilation, no, or no. maybe trying to steal a cover, but still only a near fall. That's where Daniel Maccabe gets extremely dangerous, Jordan. He can change his game plan on the fly. He can change it mid-move. You think you're in a submission? Boom, next thing you know, you're getting rolled up, and G-Sharp is getting pissed about it. I'm gonna say, Cody, I have called a lot of G-Sharp matches in my day for prestige wrestling and beyond. I've had that privilege.
and it's very, very rare to see G Sharp get thrown off his game. He has a perpetual poker face, but it's fading here tonight against Makabe. Ooh, ooh, and that poker face better get him out of harm's way here because Makabe was. He's got those arms underhooked. He was looking to take his opponent down to the mat, looking for the Makabe lock, but it looks like G-Sharp had that one scouted. That is step Ooh. one. You know G-Sharp has done his homework, and now just clubbering away at Daniel Makabe. As ugly as it is, Cody, it this works. It absolutely works, as we're seeing here, paying dividends. G-Sharp needs to do. He cannot match Daniel Makabe technically. He needs the power. He needs the strikes. He needs the intensity. You're right, Jordan. I think G Sharp was trying to best Makabe at some technical wrestling, realizing it's not going to happen, and instead unleashing the fury. Wow. Again, G Sharp is a world traveled athlete. They don't just call him the world fighter for no reason. Going for a cover here fighting all over the world. He's been all over the States. He's been to Europe, to Asia, and beyond. Anywhere and everywhere, there is a professional wrestling ring. Gregory Sharp has dominated opponents in that region. And, and again, I, I'm not trying to speak ill of the guy, but to be dominated the way he was by Jordan Cruz at a moment of violence, you gotta think that is wearing very, very heavily on his psyche here. Taking some of that aggression, that frustration at Cruz, and perhaps himself out on Makabe. Absolutely manhandling Makabe right now. This is something we're not used to seeing in a Daniel Makabe match. We're talking about the mental edge for Makabe heading into April 14th against Zack Sabre Jr. at the Roseland Theater right back here in Portland, Oregon. Mm. How about the physical edge? If this match keeps up like this that much longer, there's no way Daniel Makabe is 100% against, against ZSJ. You're tr that's true. You're absolutely right, Jordan. The longer Makabe stays in this matchup, the more damage he's taking and the, the less likely of the chance that he'll be 100% come Roseland. Hammer and anvil elbows by G-Sharp, followed up with an expert chin lock. Again, center of the ring, nowhere for Makabe to go. Referee Bradley on top of the action. He's as close as you can get without taking a punch to the face. Well, for the most part, cross face now. Makabe trying to release those fingers, but that is an iron grip from the neon ace. Daniel Makabe is extremely precise with everything he does. Every counter, every strike, every submission hold. Hold on. Well, talk about precision, my God, Von Whistler. Ouch. Oh no, with one arm left. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. Yes. Oh, come on. No! Oh! Daniel Makabe Ouch. with expert masochistic joint manipulation. And now it's Makabe unloading some strikes and G Sharp unable to defend himself takes a headbutt directly in the face. Makabe may have staggered himself a little bit there, looking a little loopy in his own right, but manages to keep Gregory Sharp down on the canvas, stomping at that already neutered arm. Nice for Cradle, rolls him up. On the fly, transitions it to a rear naked choke, and this could be it for G Sharp. Immediate transition, but G Sharp reversing into a cover of his own, both shoulders and Makabe down, and Makabe quickly and wisely escaping. He had no choice as Makabe, now he's looking for it. There's looking. that octopus stretch, a signature of his opponent come April 14th, live on IWTV at Roseland 8. A distinct message sent to Zack Sabre Jr., but Gregory Sharp escapes. Smart move by Daniel Makabe to do some damage on his opponent for this match and to play the mind game on his upcoming opponent, ZSJ. Again, Cody, you know Daniel Makabe much better than I. You've known him for much longer than I. You've been calling his matches oh, yeah. for much longer than I. Do you think there's a part of Daniel Makabe that's maybe thinking too far ahead to Sabre Jr. that's maybe overlooking Gregory Sharp as we see at his own peril? You know, it's not often that Daniel Makabe makes those kind of mistakes, but Jordan, I wouldn't put it past him in this situation, this special situation, because Zack Sabre Jr. Is, is an opponent Makabe's wanted to have forever. No! But tonight, Makabe! Cover! Kick him from Makabe! Long story short, Jordan, you're absolutely right. I think Daniel Makabe may have slightly underestimated G Sharp in this contest, and right now he's paying the price. Wow, what a German shoe 
Nasty, nasty landing for Daniel Makabe is here. What, is that what the G stands for? German Super? I think it's Gregory. Oh, okay. Perhaps an alternate meaning is G-Sharp again with the double knees in the corner, but Makabe had it scouted. That's the second time he went for this move, and now flat jack down. Makabe, maybe think STF. It's STF, yes. Step over toe hold face lock. Nowhere for Gregory Sharp to go. What a beautiful transition. Daniel Makabe never leaving a submission hold locked in for longer than he needs to as he's changing things up on the fly, but so is G-Sharp. Anything you can do, I can do better. Gregory Sharp, a true chameleon of a professional wrestler. Daniel Maccabi's a technical wizard. Gregory Sharp more than happy to adapt, but unable to adapt to this. I believe it's a figure four here. Now it's Maccabi changing the target from the arms potentially to the legs of G Sharp. These two competitors risking life and limb. Both looking for momentum. Shi Sharp trying to skyrocket his career. Makabe doing everything he can to end his on the highest note, but Sharp lands on his feet. Maybe a bit of an awkward landing there, Cody. He definitely did not come down 100% on both legs there. I think he came down more on the cover. Left. Almost, ga almost Gator rolled into the cover there. Going for the roll up once again. That leg's hurt, he's not letting it stop him here. G-Sharp on a roll, gets Makabe up. Could this be it? Not quite yet, that was close. On a roll, quite literally rolling Makabe two ways to Sunday, but a big forearm strike catches the world fighter. One from Sharp. It's a punch off. Makabe, oh, it's body punch. Looking for that big unit punch. But Gregory Sharp saw it coming again. He's done his homework. He's a student of the game. Big unit punch lands the mark. And a lariat out of nowhere. A last ditch effort by G Sharp and both combatants are down on the mat. What a matchup, Cody Von Whistler. And we're only three into a live two. Both combatants down on the mat. They have to the count of 10 to make it up to their feet. But I wouldn't be surprised if this one ends in a draw. That was a huge, huge clothesline. Oh, but here we go, here we go, they're moving. I mean, Cody, you gotta think Zack Sabre Jr. watching this one from home, be it California, Japan, or his native London with a cheeky smile on his face. After all the punishment G-Sharp has administered to Makabe, what is this? G-Sharp has definitely done his homework. He did not want to go again for the Makabe lock. Well, so is Makabe. G-Sharp attempting that signature slice bread, but Makabe got out of dodge. G-Sharp shoves Makabe back. Makabe rolls to his feet, only to meet a jumping knee to the face. Wait a minute. Sliced bread! Number two, will it secure the three? Only a two count for sliced bread. Number two. That was too close. Wow. Gregory Sharp inching closer and closer to victory here. Sharp. Is it, is he, is he thinking German suplex once again, perhaps? Just clubbering the back of Makabe. But Makabe reverses into a pin. Sharp, one of his own. Uh-oh. Again, rear naked? This is not where you want to be. On the mat with Makabe taking the leadership position here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I think we were seconds away from the Makabe lock there, Cody. Oh, I think we might be seconds away from an even more impressive maneuver. Makabe's got one of the legs hooked in there. He's got to be thinking Makabe lock prime, but I think his opponent knows it. G Sharp doing whatever he can to stay out of this situation, but Makabe is not stopping. And he's got it locked in. There's the Makabe lock. Nobody has ever gotten out of this move, and that streak continues. Makabe lock pie, the variation that, as you said, Cody, every time Daniel's locked it in, Daniel has secured a victory for over a decade, and tonight was no different. You gotta wonder if 
he's going to be able to use that move on Zack Sabre Jr. come Roseland 8. And again, perhaps for the final time tonight, Makabe offers the handshake, and this time, G-Sharp returns in kind. Friendship is running wild here in the Hawthorne. Wrestling fans, if you like to get technical, it don't get much better than what we're offering April 14th, live on IWTV from the Roseland Theater in Portland, Oregon. It is Roseland 8. Daniel McCabe head to head with Zack Sabre Jr. My goosebumps got goosebumps, Vaughn Whistler. I can hardly wait. He's gonna steal the show. Well, maybe. I, I'm gonna just say it. Is. But we also have spectacular matches like Mustafa Ali versus Kevin Blackwood or Minoru Suzuki okay, versus that, Akira. That one's gonna steal the show. Kylie Ray versus Miyu Yamashita. That, that one's gonna I mentioned gonna steal Dirty the show. Breeze versus Midnight Heat or Trisha Dora versus Amira. Okay, that one's gonna steal. What about Leo Rush and the Bullet Club War Dogs in action? Aubrey Edwards in the house. Ooh, that's my, that's my girl. <sighs> Prestige Wrestling, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Hawthorne Theater, Portland, Oregon. That was amazing. G Sharp, I gotta give it up to you, man. You were a very, very uh, willing foe, but uh, you know, I tapped you on in the middle of the ring as, as many people have felt before in the past. And uh, you know, we may be at the Hawthorne Theater today, but uh, now I'm thinking a couple of miles across town, Rosen Ballroom, three weeks from tonight, Sunday, April 14th, Zach. Saber Jr. The shirt might say Vancouver on it, but I assure you, Portland is my home away from home. And more importantly, I'm a representative of Cascadia and the Pacific Northwest. And I feel like over the last 20 years, I've proven myself to be maybe the best technical wrestler in the Pacific Northwest. And in three weeks time, Zack Saber Jr., you're gonna see that I'm one of the best technical wrestlers in the entire world. So much great action on tap. So much great action on tap. Still to come here tonight at Alive 2. My guy, E.T. For the first time in four years, Elliot Tyler competes in a North American ring. This is not Tyler's debut in prestige wrestling, no. in the infancy, in the infancy, excuse me, of prestige wrestling, teaming with one Judas Icarus to form a tag team known as The Strays. However, we talk about Judas Icarus tag team formation. He's one half of a very successful tag team called Sinner and Saint, our current prestige wrestling yeah. tag team champions, defending those titles in a two out of three falls match later on tonight. So that has to be weighing on the mind of Tyler in his return here tonight. Speaking of weighing on his mind, I think the weirdness of this guy right here is gonna be weighing on everyone else in this matchup's mind as well. Is he dead? Talk about minds, you talk about brains, right? This guy feasts on brains, crawling from the graves of Las Vegas, Nevada. The Greasy Strangler is here in Portland. I'm extremely frightened right now, Jordan. Hey, rightfully I'm so. Man enough to admit it. He's looking at us right now. Don't make eye contact with him. No sudden movements. Well, earlier on tonight, we saw this man's tag team partners, Ricky G and Danny Rose, pick up a victory. Young Fuego hoping to keep the streak going. 
it. Adrian Quest, another representative from the California scene here tonight in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, and he's looking to already start some fights here. Well, listen, we've seen it in our, we've seen from our friends over at West Coast Pro Wrestling, right? Adrian Quest has kind of made a career in recent years out of disrespecting the region, the territory that he's entering. It's SoCal or bust, but tonight, we're not talking about SoCal Cody Von Whistler. Nope. We're talking about Tecompton. He's everybody's favorite homeboy, and not only is he that, happy belated birthday to everybody's favorite homeboy. Turn of the dirty 30, Chris very, Brady. Very exciting to see Chris Brady quickly becoming a regular here in Prestige Wrestling. Certainly the most familiar face to Prestige Wrestling fans, but someone who has been looking for consistency. Very successful alongside tag team partner Ethan HD in the short-lived All-City Assault Brigade. We send our best wishes to Ethan HD on the men, but Brady's looking for his first win as a singles competitor. And like you mentioned uh, moments ago, and we had this talk before the show, very successful in those tag team matchups with Ethan HD, but still looking for that singles victory here in Prestige Wrestling. Chris Brady has a lot. Oh, come on! Elliot Tyler is about to shake those hips that don't lie and they ruined it. Now Chris Brady taking out the trash, but Adrian Quest there to meet him. Down yes. goes Quest. Psyching Brady out into a leapfrog. Brady rolls him, to, rolls him up. Crucifix, but only a two again. Adrian Quest, tag team partners, Los Suavecitos picked up a victory in our opening contest. How embarrassing would it be for Adrian Quest to join them on the plane ride home as the only member of that trio not victorious? He'd be buying drinks for sure. Counters the Irish whip, counters the counter. Elliot Tyler stomping on the foot of Brady. Said okay. And again, Cody, I know how excited you were to see this man back in a prestige wrestling ring, back in the United States of America, competing for the first time in four years. What can you tell us about Elliot Tyler? Elliot Tyler, a very decorated tag team wrestler in the Pacific Northwest, a mainstay up in the Canadian wrestling scene. But don't let that fool you. He is one hell of a single. Shoulders combat. down. No. 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 Looking for a maybe. Oh, look at that. I don't know what to call that, like a modified clover leaf of doom. Oh, and speaking of doom. Lazarus is, is calling for the tap here. Again, the man the man eats brains. He's a cryptid. He's a zombie. I'm not sure if he's the, the wisest competitor, but wisely breaking up the submission. Does he know how wrestling works? He knows how hurting people works. I assume when he eats people's brains, he would take their knowledge. Is that how that works? Transitive property. Ooh. Nevertheless, Adrian Quest. Not to be out shy, not to be intimidated by Lazarus here, but it's the Cannibal Cryptid. Putting those educated feet to good use has Adrian Quest hung out to dry, and a big shotgun drop kick to the back. Absolutely nowhere for Quest to go as Brady runs into a choke. And what did the five fingers say to the face? Slap! Dodges the back elbow, Brady springboard. Nice cross body, taking Lazarus out of the equation if only for the moment. But it's a cliche for a reason, Von Whistler. Gonna have eyes at the back of your head in a multi-man situation like this. Chris Brady turned his attention away from Elliot Tyler to deal with Lazarus, and now caught up in this leg lock. And Tyler thinking front sue play, and he's still got that still got that death lock applied. Beautiful. But a kick out there from Lazarus. He's still with the death lock cinched in, I might add. He's still holding. Looking to transition it, maybe maybe going a fellow uh, Canadian move there with the Lance Storm single leg crab applied. Adrian Quest though. Uh-oh. Big kick to the temple of Elliot Tyler, breaking up the submission. Submission maneuvers are a very, very dangerous strategy in a matchup like this. When at any given moment, one of your opponents could enter the ring while you are prone, while you are opening yourself up to attack and break up that submission. Yeah. 
Got to keep your head on a swivel. Something easier said than done. I think the only person here who might actually have eyes on the back of their head is Laz. Well, I don't want to think about that. Do not give this guy a haircut. Stand out from the Las Vegas scene. Oh, oh nice back Lazarus. suplex there from Tyler as Lazarus rises to his feet. Again, we mentioned our collaboration with Pride Style, Pride and Prestige in Las Vegas, Nevada on April 26th. Lazarus himself, a former, formerly one half, I should say, of the Pride Style Tag Team Champions, the Crypt Keeper of Pride Style. Oh, and these two, <laughs> Quest and Lazarus saw the momentum that Elliot Tyler was building and they knew they had to cut it. They knew they had to stop it. Yeah, you often see this in multi-person matchups like this, fatal four-way matches like this, unorthodox allies. You never see Quest and Lazarus team, but right now, double snake eyes sending Tyler into Brady. Using him as a human lawn dart. Oh, wait a minute. Two com three combatants thinking the same thing. Elliot Tyler, German suplex in Quest and Lazarus. Two birds with one German suplex. Elliot Tyler bringing the heat. But so is Chris Brady. What a backhand. Catches the foot to Tyler, but not the second one. Nice Enziguri there from Brady, and Tyler rolls to the outside. Ooh. Brady's clear in the runway. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's everybody's favorite homeboy, Tope Con Hilo. But not to be outdone, here comes Quest into the second row. Young Fuego on fire here, but by my count, there's one man in the ring. Chance of let's go homeboy, but I think Helly and Tyler may be thinking, Acai Mundo, met with the boot from Lazarus. Oh, not today, as Lazarus now climbing up. What's he thinking, Jordan? Elbow drop! Wiping out all three of the opposition. My God, what a landing. Respect. Tell you what, Cody Von Whistler, that is a hardwood floor here in the Hawthorne. Really, really ugly landing for all three of those men. And it's Lazarus setting his sights on Adrian Quest, perhaps going in for the kill. I think he tastes the blood in the water, or the brains in the water. Lazarus. Thinking Tombstone pile driver, but Quest able to evade. Catches the foot into a neck breaker. That was nice. Quest now into the corner. Standing shooting star press, but Tyler there to meet him. Elliot Tyler right behind him. Got him up and, ooh. What is Tyler thinking? Barbie Crusher! And the representative of the Lionsgate Dojo up in Canada bringing his A game here in his first match back in the States in what, four years? Uh oh. Uh oh. oh. To choke off. We got double goozles, but Brady taking advantage. From the top, everybody's favorite homeboy picking his spot. Wait a minute. Ghettoist, Moonsault, never! Right onto the legs of Tyler there. Brady connected, but I don't think he hit Tyler where he wanted to. But either way, Laz taking advantage of it, at least momentarily, as Brady rolls through. Nasty landing there for Lazarus. I think that move took a lot out of Chris Brady as well. Yeah, might, have, might have killed the undead there. But it's Brady back up to a vertical base first. Again, ascending to the top rope, hoping high risk means high reward. No water in the pool. Adrian Quest. Tornado DDT sends Brady to the floor. Yeah, the momentum such that Brady's out of the equation and we are down to two, but it's Lazarus with the goozle. He was thinking greasy strangle, but Adrian Quest had an answer. Quest. Has the momentum, can he capitalize on it? And I think he just took the head off the zombie. Adrian Quest looking to get some height here. 450! Means one, two, three. What an impressive showing.
Well, Cody, I posed the question earlier on before the bell rang. What would it mean for Adrian Quest? I, I, I was impressed. I, I, you're not the only one. Adrian Quest just walked in here and dominated, walking away with the W as well as his stable mates. And I was, like we were saying, if he lost this, it would have been an embarrassing plane ride home, but something tells me all three of these guys are going to be celebrating for days. Yeah, we are partying in Portland and beyond. The future, very, very bright for Adrian Quest. Young Fuego picking up the one, two, three against three of Prestige Wrestling's finest. Wow. And Cody, I'm looking forward to this next matchup, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little scared of what's set to transpire. Another promotion off the checklist. See, we told you Los Suavecitos run the West Coast. Prestige, so I'm getting used to this shit. This one is about as personal as it gets. Definitely personal and definitely violence. Because ladies and gentlemen, my binary friends, the following contest is a last man stand. It was in this very building, the Hawthorne Theater, Prestige Wrestling presented alive. On that night, Jordan Cruz went head to head with Jaden. A very impressive performance as he's had since he first set foot in a prestige wrestling ring, but couldn't get the job done. Cody, Cody, what the hell is this guy doing? Jordan Cruz is already cutting off the turnbuckle pads. This matchup hasn't even begun yet. Jaden hasn't even made his entrance, and Jordan Cruz is already turning up the danger. As I was saying, Cruz losing that matchup, and something finally snapped. He showed his true colors. He attacked Jaden and turned his back on the prestige faithful. A rematch was set for Roseland 7 that Cruz won in dominant fashion, defeating Jaden in three minutes and 38 seconds. And that has brought us to tonight, the rubber match. Last man standing, Cruz, Jaden, three. Hold on, Cody from behind, from the skies. Jaden out of nowhere with a big drop kick. Baby, get out of there. Well, Cody, it's not the traditional variant we're used to, but I think we can still give it to him. What did we just see? We saw a super hero drop kick. Catching Jordan Cruz off guard, and the Hawthorne Theater is on fire. The Rose City coming alive for their savior here at Alive 2. Jaden unleashing the fury with some huge punches to the midsection. Not a soft target, I might add. Yeah, this is a very different shade, and I'm not just talking about the change in hair color, but all it took was one knee from Jordan Cruz, one knee, and immediately everything shifts. Or did it? Jaden's still very much in this one. I get it. As the unbelievable one standing tall momentarily as uh, Jordan Unbelievable Cruz. intensity there. Excuse me, Cody. Oh, no, I am just as amazed as always by the power and intensity of Jordan Cruz. But Jaden, using his speed, kicks Cruz directly in the dome, maybe thinking springboard. And the Rose City savior has sent Jordan Cruz to the floor. Why not? Jaden's thinking about getting just a little bit of air. Tope Suicida! Through the bottom ropes there. They call that a lope, excuse me. Nice. After Roseland 7, after being systematically dissected by Cruz, it was Jaden who issued the challenge, and Cruz feeling slighted, feeling disrespected that Jaden, in his own words, hid behind a keyboard, showing up at his home turf, attacking him from behind at DOA's Love It to Death. It was a brawl that took nearly the entire locker room, officials and wrestlers and trainees alike to separate them, but no one separating them here tonight, because Cody, nope. 
Damn it! This has to end! And it will end because this last man standing match is proof of that. There can be only one, not to quote Highlander too much, but what a forearm to the spine there is Jaden reaching out in pain. But the cameraman ain't gonna help you. Again, Cody, we saw it in real time back in live after that loss to Jaden, the shift in Jordan Cruz. Maybe something broke, ooh, maybe ooh. it's something that had been there all along. Jaden reversing Cruz's right. fortunes, giving him a taste of his own medicine, saying, you want to send me into the post? Here's how that post tastes, pal. And these two are now brawling over by us. They're on the stage here. Well, dangerously close to the commentary oh, position dang. here. Come on, fellas. Damn. And Cruz once again has those wire cutters. Now, come on. Don't do it. This isn't wrestling. You're going to hurt the man. He's a, he's a father. Jaden. Oh, lands on the apron. Kick to Jordan Cruz, and his action is getting way too close to us, Castle. What is Jaden thinking? Mercifully sends Cruz back inside the rig. Thankfully, Bradley was here to protect us, our official. I talked to Jaden earlier on tonight. He said it's a different strategy here tonight against Cruz. He tried to outpart him. He tried to outquick him at Roseland 7. Says that clearly wasn't enough. Instead, it's about strategy. It's about outsmarting Cruz. Or perhaps outswinging him. Jaden from beneath the ring, from the depths of hell, pulls out a chair, but no, Cruz dodges it. Oh, the ace is in the hole of Cruz. Those devastating knees straight to the face of Jaden. Again, fans, feel those knees, massage them at home. One of the hardest bones of the human body, but I think this chair might be even harder, and Jaden knows it, landing on his feet to evade, using it as a stepping stone into a Hurricane Rada. Nicely done as the unbelievable Jaden is feeling the momentum. He's starting to heat up here. He's got to stay on his target. And fans, we can't forget in the same corner that Cruz is, there's still that exposed turnbuckle he cut before the bell. Jaden narrowly avoiding it. Almost went face first into that turnbuckle, and Jaden. No! Oh! Just went neck first. Just went neck first. Oh my God. Uh, uh, Jordan. It doesn't I, look good, Cody. I, if, I think he should stay down. It's, Enough is enough. I mean, he put up one hell of a fight, but after that, I, I think Jaden should not be moving. He's risking further injury. Come on, come on, dude. Jaden just crumples there off the forearm. Again, Cody, I understand how personal this is. But Jaden has all the potential in the world. Hell, forget wrestling. As I mentioned, the man is a father. Does he really want to risk this? Is it really worth it? Fuck you, Jordan! Fuck you, Jordan! Fuck you, Jordan! No, 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 no. Enough is enough. Steel chair to the neck of Jaden, Jesus Christ. Look at him. Proud of himself. And again, Cruz very well could have pinned Jaden if this were a traditional match. Hell, if this were a traditional no disqualification match, but it's not. Jaden has up until the count of 10. And even though I might disagree with it, even though I think he might be shortening his career, even his life by getting back up to his feet, where there is a will, there is a way. And Jordan's will, Jaden's will fights on. You gotta know when to hold him and know when to fold him. Oh, well, Jordan Cruz folding that trash can lid over the back of the Cerulean star. Cerulean Star is feeling the effects of the SoCal Stallion as Jordan Cruz now turning his attention to the depths of the ring looking for God only knows what. It's a ladder. That is a ladder. Some fans are never happy. Asking for tables. Cody, just need to be careful. Jordan Cruz is not a high flyer, right? He's not, he's not known to, to take to the top rope. Maybe for the everybody gets superplexed. Oh my god! But that's it. What the hell is he planning with that ladder? Unfortunately for Jaden, I think we are going to find out as Jordan Cruz just dragging Jaden. And now placing, oh no, come on, man, come on. 
Castle. This is not. This is oh. Jaden crumples. I mean the man. No, come on, Jordan. No. Have mercy, man. He's a human being. Come on. Somebody stop it. Somebody put a stop to this. Jordan, it's all legal. In a last man standing match, anything goes. And Jaden, this has got to be it. Referee I, I hope it is. I hope it is. Nothing against Jaden. I love the man. It's one of, one of my greatest pleasures as a broadcaster here in Prestige. But no, come on. Oh, come on. Jordan Cruz stopping the officials count. Cruz had this one in the bag. This isn't about winning a match, Cody. It's never been about winning a match. It's about proving something. Maybe to Jaden, maybe to these fans, I think to himself. Vicious elbow to the top of the head. Again, the elbows, the knees, the hardest parts of the human body. Two of the hardest bones in the human body. And Jordan Cruz putting all the power he can muster to dig them into the unbelievable. Maybe, maybe, maybe thinking no more sorrow here, Cody. Thinking it, but Jaden, Jaden doing whatever he can to get out of that one. Where the hell is Jaden finding this from? From deep down inside, from the love of the prestige faithful to the, oh shit. Oh no, no, Jordan, don't do it. Jaden carries the trash can lit up with him. Jordan Cruz was thinking power bomb. But it was Jaden using Cruz's own trash can lit against him like a frisbee. Just yeeted it. Code oh, Red! Man. The connoisseur of Code Reds. Jaden will hit it wherever he can. Cody, I'm not sure if it was from the trash can lid. Not sure if it was from being ensnared in the trash can itself. But Jaden has cut open something nasty. This is the heart. This is the fighting spirit that has made him the Rose City's savior. Another low pay, but this time gets caught by Cruz. Oh no. Brain Buster into the apron. It's the same move that spelled the beginning of the end back in Roseland 7. The man was lucky he survived then to make it to this match tonight. I'm not sure if he'll be so lucky here. I, I'm trying to stay professional here. I've known Jaden since he was 17 years old. Man, uh, this is, I, I, he's got to stay down, Jordan. This and I, I've known Jordan Cruz damn near since I started in this business. And I'm so disappointed, I'm so sick to my stomach at the monster, the repugnant, disgusting human being that he has become, that he has transformed into before our very eyes. Somehow, some way, Jaden is back on his feet, but unfortunately for him, Jordan Cruz is lying in wait. Another huge knee. So vicious with those knees. The only thing keeping Jaden up is his positioning between those ropes. Cruz will not show mercy. Cruz will not Show quit. No, maybe looking for that power bomb that he was trying to hit. Oh no, no, looking for a clash of styles potentially. Styles clash. I'm not sure if our cameras can catch it, but there is a glassy look in Jaden's eyes right now, Von Whistler. Lights on, nobody home. This is it. We're done. Thanks for coming. The only movement involuntary twitches of the body. Mustering himself Stunned. back up to his feet, using that trash can lid, but it's Cruz using it. Cruz is just toying with him at this point. Oh, and now he's thinking he's, Tombstone, but no, Jaden wriggles out of dodge. I think he was trying to send Jaden into that corner. The already exposed corner that spelled disaster, but there's a taste of your own medicine, Cruz. A bittersweet backfire, and Jaden. He was thinking slice bread number two, but Cruz catches him. No, 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 Tombstone! And carries through, doesn't release. But Jaden reverses! 
Cruz got a little too cocky and he's paying for it. Where in the hell did Jaden pull that one out of? We have seen some wars in prestige wrestling, man. Things have gotten hardcore, things have gotten crazy, things have gotten personal, but this rivals the best and bloodiest. Only one man can be left standing. Jaden got that elbow up at the right time. Gets the boot up, gets caught though. Not for long, fights his way out of that predicament as Jaden dodges the lariat, goes behind. Hey, Jordan, why you tripping? Wait. The Van Trippinator! Somehow, some way, Jaden back in this thing. We <laughs> talked about outsmarting Jordan Cruz. He knew at the onset that that was his only hope of victory, his only hope of survival. And we're seeing it manifest here. Steal the spine, let's go, Jaden. Payback is a biatch. Just wailing at Jordan Cruz. This is for the attack at Alive. This is for the decimation at Roseland 7. This is for the blind side at DOA. Months and months of torment. Jaden putting a stop, putting an end to his supervillain here tonight. Go oh, low blow from Cruz, come on. Was thinking buckle bomb, but Jaden reversed, sending Cruz face first into his own exposed turnbuckle. Turnabout's fair play. Jaden once again with a last ditch effort to try and stay in this matchup as, as the Rose City Savior now is grabbing that ladder, and you gotta think he's got something wicked in mind. Yeah, the same ladder that was crunched against his person. He's not done, he's looking under the ring here, Cody. But he, he's wasting precious seconds on the outside. Each and every moment he spends searching for plunder underneath the ring gives Cruz time to recuperate. Oh. Jordan Cruz, he's moving. He's and Jaden, Jaden has found himself a door. Perhaps hoping to open a world of hurt for Jordan Cruz. More chairs, why not? because we don't have enough. Both combatants now donning the crimson mask as Jordan Cruz is just oozing over here in the ring and Jaden now clearing out who Lord knows what over there in the crowd. Again, Cruz back up to his knees. Discretion of referee Brad Lee not making the count. Cruz is almost counted out there, able to pull himself Kind of halfway up there on the ladder, but Jaden there just breaking the count again by coming in and stomping on him. And the referee is, Bradley is trying to get some control here. But like you said, and before this match started, there's little he can do to control this thing. The referee is here to count till 10, and that is it. And like you said, Cody, Cruz is gushing blood. It is thick and it is fast. Talk about fast. Quick shot there to the face of Jaden. On the floor, Jaden has concocted a devastating mess of a... Air Sparta! Through the door! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! You know, Cody, I made it very clear how disappointed I am in the personal choices of Jordan Cruz but no one can accuse him of taking the easy road out here tonight. No way. In the same way that he has put Jaden's life at risk, he has done the very same to his own. The SoCal Spartan flying through the air, pulls himself to his feet. Jaden slowly behind there. Referee Brad Lee says they're up and this last man standing match continues. This is in fact awesome. These men may need to kill each other, may need to commit first degree murder here to win this match. Don't give them any ideas. 
Oh, Cody, I don't think they need to hear it from either of us. Big uppercut there from Cruz, levels Jaden, but wisely using that bottom rope to maintain a vertical base. Here we go. You know, oftentimes you see when the blood starts to pour, competitors lose consciousness. They start to lose power in those strikes. I think it's the opposite with Jordan and Jaden here. If anything, it's, it's firing them up more like sharks smelling blood in the water. When the blood goes past their eyes, they can feel the intensity. They know they have to turn it up to 11, and they're doing just that here in this last man standing match as Jaden now looking to have some fun with that ladder. Again, wasting precious seconds, setting it up, giving Cruz the opportunity. That's a big ladder. Yeah. Well, Cody, this is a big vendetta. It's as personal as it gets. Scaling to the top, rung by rung. Uh-oh, but Jordan Cruz catches him. As I said, Jaden spent a second too long setting it up. Into the fireman's carry, the waiting arms of Cruz. Both combatants now climbing up to a very dangerous position on the ladder. Where are they going? They're gonna we're gonna tear the venue apart. We're not gonna have it alive three. We're not gonna have the end of a live two or championship main events I think, by the time these two are done. I think Jaden just realized where he was and that he's in a bad position as Jordan Cruz followed Jaden up the ladder, but Jaden's still fighting. It's a very dangerous place to be. No, come on, man. Come on. Jordan, don't do it. Jaden doing everything he can to fight out here, Cody. Fighting for his life. Slams Cruz face first into that ladder, not once, but twice. Jaden wisely thinking better of it. He's, he's going to the opposite side. No way. Jaden thinking power bomb. Power bomb! Oh my God! It may be a last man standing match, Cody Von Whistler, but God damn it, man, there was not a single member of the prestige faithful sitting down when that power bomb landed. What a contest, what a war. The fact that both these combatants are still moving tells a story as Jaden just slid the steel chair into the leg of Jordan Cruz. Now digging it into the abdomen. Thinking maybe a DDT. No! Quote the Jaden Nevermore. But Jaden has to keep Cruz down. He can't cover him. It's not enough. And again, Jaden to the outside. We've seen trash cans and trash can lids, steel chairs, doors and ladders. What the hell is the Cerulean Star looking for? It's another door. It's another door. The forbidden door. Well, nothing forbidden, nothing off the table here tonight. Jaden definitely went to Home Depot before this one. That's, what, is he, what has he got in mind? He's got another chair oh. to the midsection as Jaden is concocting something over in the corner there. Again, I gotta give the devil his due. The same credit I've given to Jaden, my sentimental favorite, our sentimental favorite, the Rose City's sentimental favorite. You gotta give that same credit tenfold to Jordan Cruz. He has more than matched the mustard. Prestige faithful. Getting behind Jaden here as he has concocted some carnage in the corner. Setting up a door bridge in the corner, but it's Cruz up to his feet. I think the only reason Cruz is on his feet is because he pulled himself up in the corner. He's thinking plus ultra driver, Cody Von Whistler, but his back gave out. It was too much, Cruz was too big. There's been too much damage. Or was it? Jaden somehow has Cruz up on his, on the, what the? F no, it was too much. He got him up, but it was too much from one corner to another. And now Cruz got him right where he wants him. 
He doesn't need steel. He doesn't need wood. Those knees devastating enough as is. And Cody, who gets superplexed? Everybody gets superplexed. He's not done. Cruz now positioning the, 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 the trash can. No more sorrow. And no more Jade and the man's dead. There will be sorrow no more. Jaden, he's got to stay down. He's twitching. His eyes are bulging. Th th this, this, this is this is really sick, twisted stuff. It's it's not fun. It's not entertainment. It, it's. We, I mean, we apologize, fans. Come on, Jaden. Jaden pulling himself to his feet. Just stay down, kid. Just stay down! Oh no. Oh no. Burning hammer into the door, but oh my god! Superhero landing! <laughs> Roundhouse kick! Van Jadenator connects as the Rose City Savior is climbing up to the top. No, but he doesn't realize Cruz is there to meet him. Oh, no. This man won't stay down. This monster won't stay down. No, come on. Come on. Come on. No! Jaden reversing it. I think it was an attempt of an F5 or a power slam, but Jaden landing on the apron, landing the tornado DDT on Cruz. Face first into the turnbuckle that he exposed in the beginning of the matchup. Jordan Cruz is feeling the effects right now. Be careful what you wish for, Cruz. You just might get it. Superhero splash! Onto the chair, too, and now both combatants are down. Oh, come on. Don't tell me this one is going to end in a double count out. Castle, I don't know. After, after everything we've seen, these men shortening their careers to end a vendetta, it, it can't end like this. It can't. It's a seven. And Jaden's up. The superhero. Conquers the villain! In the very same building where this issue began, Jaden puts it to bed. Jaden puts an end to the reign of terror that is Jordan Cruz. Wow. Living up to his own moniker, that was unbelievable. There were so many times where I thought Jaden was dead, absolutely done for. But the Rose City Savior fighting back from the depths of hell and, and standing tall on the top of that ladder that he powerbombed Jordan Cruz off of earlier. Yeah, we may have seen the death of Superman, but you can't kill the unbelievable. Jordan Cruz may have been bigger. He may have been stronger, but tonight, there was no heart to match Jaden. Terrible on the knees. The knees. That's what you're thinking of after we just witnessed Martin with the, the damn knees. You know, Cody, we saw another very personal issue that Jaden put to bed against Diablo Sauce Alex Zane, his former tag team partner in this very building just a couple years ago. I didn't think we could get more personal than that. I didn't think we could get more violent than that. But here we are. Fuck. 
Yep. I know this man just tried to kill me for the last part of like what three, four months. But I need y'all to give it up for Jordan Cruz, man. Jordan came on an off chance, got in the ring with me, got mad that I beat him, took my head off. But that's okay. The man has pushed me far beyond my limit. Gave me some of the toughest battles in this ring, and for that, hell, I can't be too mad at him. <laughs> now, that's where the is behind me. I want to focus on what's next for the Rose City Saber. You're back there. You're right beyond these banners. So I need you to listen to me. Man to man, father to father, there is something that I need you to do for me. That's my kid. At Roseland, you announced a very, very interesting particular person that I have been eyeing up for a very, very long time. And now, William, you've watched me. You've watched me from the very beginning. You've watched me since I was a teenager, wrestling in shitty Walmart tights. And you've watched me just like all of these people have watched me evolve into the hero that I am today. And all of these people, the citizens of the Rose Sea, have not chosen me to be their hero, but they damn sure have embraced me as such. Prestige Wrestling presents Roseland 8, and our hero meets his own. I, I, I'm a commentator and I'm speechless. That's gonna happen? Leo Rush and Jaden? I mean, we have to leave it up to Prestige Matchmakers. Oh, we have to leave it up to William Quintana, I, I, I mean. Don't let us down, Will. Oh my. 
Well, fans, as exciting as that is, April 14th on IWTV, we still have so much more to go here tonight. We need to reset, we need to restore order. But up next, more singles action. Do not go anywhere. I can finally put it all behind me, Jordan Cruz. You tried to keep me down, but in the end, you found out like everybody finds out, nobody has got more heart than the hero. And now I can move on to bigger and better things. Rosalind's right around the corner. I'm feeling myself. I got the momentum back in my sails. And it's time to prove myself against one of the best light heavyweights in the world today. Leo Rush, I hope that you answer the call. I've been waiting on this one seven, eight years, and I need to prove it to myself. I need to prove it to the people of the city that their hero is a man of his world. We are back at you with more Prestige Wrestling Alive 2 for a very, very different piece of singles competition. Yeah, that's putting it one way. Making his Prestige debut, the incomparable, one of a kind, Matt Brannigan. because there is a clear distinction between Matt Brannigan's Purple Merkel and the devil himself, Drexel's Titty Twister. It's a regional thing. Yes. You know, it's like pop and soda. Correct. Or tennis shoes and sneakers. Ooh. Nevertheless, Matt, Matt, Matt Brannigan, excuse me, with a pre-match message to Drexel, really poking fun at the hardcore acumen of the devil himself. It's not Ollie pokes that. Hey, -o. Toothpicks instead of skewers, push pins instead of thumbtacks, closet doors instead of ringside doors. Really trying to get in the head of Drexel, but... I, I think he's also trying to get in the pocket of Buddy Ruth. He's oh. got a big hug he gave Buddy, and Buddy's smiling from ear to ear. Listen, Brannigan's a hugger. I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not sure if his opponent is. Huh? What, what are you talking about? Hey, I'm Drexel's here. I said it once and I'll say it a million times. Never in the history of independent professional wrestling has an entrance song fit so perfectly. After that last man standing match, I call that a saving grace. But uh, despite that, I, I don't think Brannigan is in for an easy night at the office. Nope, it's never an easy night when Drexel's involved. And uh, like you mentioned, let's get weird, weird chance started. Like the fans mentioned, Cody, articulating it better than we ever could. Yeah, uh, Drexel usually coming to the ring with his bag of deadly tricks. Instead, tonight coming out in a very soft bathrobe. Again, maybe poking fun at the uh, attire worn in the pre-match. Well, Comments from Brannigan. Brannigan trying to get into Drexel's head. Drexel saying he thinks it's the other way around. It remains to be seen. Something's poking in here. Or it's cold. Look at these guys. I don't think that's... 
it's an understandable mistake. This is his first time here in prestige wrestling. Also, I want to point out that Brannigan says Drexel can't kill the raft. He certainly tried on a number of occasions. And there you see the first purple nurple of the matchup onto the pierced niplaise of one Drexel. It wasn't very effective. Wow, he likes it. What a twist. Why am I even surprised anymore? Is that a robot chicken reference? What a twist. Ooh, double twist. No, 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 no. Double nurple, Cody. There is a distinct oh, difference. And it, it's not effective. Oh, wow. That's, you know something's weird if it's too weird for Brannigan. And there is the titty twister from Drexel. Man, and Brannigan likes it too. You know, Cody, the, they say the only way to become a monster is to defeat one and with some pelvic motion. That's science. Only one can hump. Uh, that is a... Uh, titty twisting overhead suplex. A traditional wrestling move. In the words of John Oliver, professional wrestling is better than the things you like. As I was trying to say, the only way to defeat a monster is to become one. And I think Brannigan trying to adapt to Drexel's unique brand of weirdness with this abdominal stretch. Oh, things are getting perp. He's lubricating the fingies. He's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. And now Drexel biting at the fingers. He's done having fun. At least Brannigan's type of fun. Would that be a nip toss? Oh, Von Whistler, you've done it again. We like to have fun here. Oh, he's getting some serious areola in this match. Ironic that the man with the purple dreadlocks calls it the titty twister, but nevertheless, purple nerf from Brannigan to both nipples, taking Drexel down. And I gotta say, Cody, people often underestimate Matt Brannigan because of the silliness, because of the mind games. This is a capable professional wrestler. He's in excellent shape. It's not his first rodeo, and he is getting his nipples bitten. Oh my God. Did he just Irish whip Drexel by his nipple? That's what you're worried about. That's the, yes. Drexel is chopping the nipples of Brannigan. And well, you're that's worried normal. about the technicality. That's normal. Like. Drexel biting people's nips. That's just a Sunday night. <laughs> really? I, I kind of think we're past that. Told Drexel to think about what he did as Brannigan's maybe thinking to hightail it out of the Hawthorne Theater, but Drexel has other plans. A rake of the back. And again, this is what Drexel does. He suckers opponents into the mind games, and he said he was leaving his weapons at home, didn't say anything about the plunder from the ringside faithful, and eight by 10 leaves a paper cut on the hand of Brannigan, and Drexel's not done. Now, right here is a meeting of two very different styles of hardcore as Drexel using his paper cuts and biting once again. We talk about the elbow and the knees, the teeth, some of the hardest bones in the body as well, Von Whistler, mm -hmm. especially when they're clenched together on a nipple. Speaking of hard bones in the body, Brannigan rolled back into the ring. Oh, whoa! What are you talking about? Drexel rallying behind the Portland faithful but Brannigan with a huge chop to the chest, a chest no doubt softened up by the Purple Nurples. <laughs> oh, Challenge accepted. It's gonna be a content crossover. If I don't see an online collaboration for this, I'm gonna be real pissed. It's gotta be a first. Oh. Brannigan's a good partner. Check it in on Drexel. You think they have a safe word? Oh. Brannigan 
not going to give Drexel the satisfaction, literally. And what did Buddy do to deserve that? Buddy, unfortunately, got Drexel wiped all over him. And Drexel now painting the fence with a double chop across the nips. I think I'd rather get Drexel wiped all over me than a double overhand chop from Drexel. But that's just me. Speak for yourself. Oh no, not again. He did. Ringside fan with the, what the hell is that? That's a, it's a wooden stick. It's the dead stick. You poke him to see if they're alive. It's traditional I'm wrestling. Sure, the dead stick, of yeah. course. Yeah. Brand again, maybe play a little bit of possum, suckering Drexel in. Man, it worked. Drawing the ire of the prestige faithful, digging into the neck of Drexel. Again, when Brannigan wants to, keyword when he wants to, he can turn it on. The guy is technically proficient. It's a very smart strategy. You make your opponent underestimate you. You make him think you're in there to have a fun time. But then he flips that switch, and right now he's got Drexel quite literally up against the ropes. Smart, horny, what's the difference? It's all the same here in prestige, baby. Nice snapmare there from Brannigan. Making it look too easy with a crisp drop kick to the neck. Little press. Oh. Only a two. Barely a one, actually, there. Drexel got right up. Oh, I'm not sure if he's going to get right up yeah. from that. Super kick square to the mush. And now Brannigan's looking to put on Drexel's extremely sexy yet sophisticated entrance room. Clearly, Portland does not tolerate thieves. Put someone through a door, totally. Wear another man's bathrobe, too far. How dare you? What do you think hurt Drexel more? Oh! Oh, Matt, <laughs> Matt Panikin sent for a ride. Now take it off his feet. Drexel, an innovator here. Using his own robe as a technique there into the corner now goes Drexel, gets the boot up into the face of Brannigan, and Drexel takes him head first into the corner, and Brannigan is feeling the effects. I do have to just point out that this is the same venue cover from Drexel. It's the same venue where we witnessed that brutal no canvas, no ropes, barbed wire death match at reality unfolds between Drexel and Akira, and now we're witnessing this. It's called range, sweetie. Drexel thinking pile driver, looking to put Brannigan it's gonna away. Be it's gonna be it. No doubt difficult to do so with the row. Gives Brannigan the opportunity to escape that textural difference, not something Drexel's used to. Jack hammers Drexel down, hooks the leg. But only a two, kick out from the devil. Do you think there's a part of Drexel at this juncture that's maybe regretting not bringing his bag of tricks, not bringing that bag of handcrafted bone oh, yeah. weapons? You know, a lot of people only know Drexel for his time in the death matches in the hardcore, but he's been doing this for a long time, and he'll surprise you when he doesn't bring those bag of tricks, if you will, if he doesn't bring his weapons with him. He knows what he's doing in that ring. He just enjoys murdering people more than wrestling. Brannigan with a gut wrench. Gut wrench, sit out, power ball might be it for Drex. No, oh, no. Oh, only a two. Brannigan disagrees. Referee Buddy Ruth, as close to the action as you can get. I'll take his word for it every time. Of course, the Prestige Wrestling Tag Team Championships and the Prestige Wrestling World Championships on the line, but Drexel with the old five on two. The man makes money off of those. Oh. I think he just got a new subscriber. Pile driver. Thanks for coming, Brannigan. See what I did there? Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. saw Drexel the prestige wrestling competition it was back at Roseland 7 picked up a victory again a very different match a Rose City death match a show stealer against Amira it was on that night he announced his career was winding down his final year of full time active competition and I gotta say I'm sorry Brandigan I can't Brandigan I'd like to I'm impartial 
I'm sorry. I apologize to bite your balls. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. All right, time to get real. For the last seven years, seven years since Prestige started, this became my home because William and the Prestige crew have allowed me to do things that I never thought possible in my crazy ass career. We both 100% forgot about what he might be up to at this coming Roseland, and uh, he's not wrong. Sammy has been running his mouth for a long, long time, and we'll see if that mouth still runs after it deals with the devil. Sammy Callahan. said it better than we ever could. Sammy Callahan and the wrestling revolver. You got by by the skin of your teeth back at Roseland 7 against our ace. Now it's time for a dance with the devil. Time to reap what you sow. Wow. Cody, we're not done. Nope. It's time for championship action. My body is ready. Alan 
Angels letting the fans, he's letting them know he thinks they're number one. He's a nice guy. Just rolls off the tongue. I don't want that anywhere near my tongue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about Brannigan still. Who is it? All jokes aside, the things are about to t get turned up to 11. Like you're surprised. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. Alan Angels is a horrible person. This matchup it, hasn't officially begun yet. This isn't a no disqualification contest. Both combatants have to be up and in their corner, ready to go. Again, discretion of referee Brad Lee. That's what it's all about. The prestige wrestling world championship. Shall we get even stand here, man? The bell sounds. I, I, we're underway. What is this, Cody? This is a one-sided beatdown thus far. Alan Angels quite literally jumping our champion before the bell. Here's what it is, Cody. Alan Angels knows it's crunch time. Yep. He's had three opportunities before. He can make all the excuses about Sonico's interference or Kevin Blackwood or Nick Wayne or, or Chris Sabin, right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is his fourth crack at the prestige wrestling world title. Most athletes are lucky if they get one. This is it, man. Oh. Getting his way out of the predicament there, Jordan. I hate to play devil's advocate. Don't. But Come every on. single time that Allen Angels has had a championship opportunity, you said it. There has been some sort of stipulation. There has been extra combatants in the matchup. He's never had a singles one-on-one -on -one match against Alex Shelley. Oh, right now, shoulder full of posts for Angels spilling to the outside. Angels may have gotten the jump start on Shelly, but Shelly showing why for the past two decades he has been the standard bearer of excellence in professional wrestling, independent, technical, or otherwise. Facts. Again, you think about the, the laundry list, excuse me, Cody, the laundry list of opponents that Alex Shelley has defeated in his time as prestige wrestling world champion. Names like Speedball Mike Bailey, Filthy Tom Lawler, Charlie Haas, Lindsay Dorado, Titus Alexander, Ray Horus, Bandito, Calvin Tankman, Yamato, Sonico, John Gresham. It is a who's who of the best in the world. Keep listening, people, because they're fighting in the crowd and I can't see them. I can guarantee you that these two are not taking it easy on each other. They have battled into the crowd, Jordan. Again, referee's discretion, as you said, not a sanctioned, no disqualification, false count anywhere on the match merch yet. table. Shelly just slamming angels across that merch. Well, merch available at prestigewrestling.net, and who knows? Better be on sale after that. Well, or maybe upcharge. You might get some sweat from champion or challenger. Ew. Hopefully, hopefully our awesome merch team got out of the way there. Last time we were here at the Hawthorne Theater for a live, Shelly said it himself, Angels works incredibly hard. He's extremely talented. That is why, in his own words, it's a shame he's such a, a bitch. Shelly's words, not mine. And I think Shelly oh. looking to teach Angels a lesson on first into the post. Guaranteed dislocated the shoulder right there. I, I don't see how he didn't. If he didn't before, he's gonna try it again, Jordan. Alex Shelley, I, he's, it's a different side of Shelley. 
Alex Shelley always fights tooth and nail to retain the prestige wrestling world championship, but especially here tonight against Alan Angels because he knows what Angels winning would mean, right? Angels has been a thorn in the side, the boil on the ass of prestige wrestling. He doesn't like this company. He doesn't respect this company. He doesn't care about this company. It's a stepping stone to superstardom for him. Speaking of stepping stones, I think Alex Shelley might be about to do a step of his own. No! Zeroing in on the arm of Alan Angels, the world champion has found a target, and he's exploiting it. Shelly now back in control, this time on the apron. Still has the arm of Alan Angels. Oh, whoa, 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 Angels. Grabbing a, a sleeper hold of sorts here, but Shelly using the leverage from the ropes to evade. But Alan Angels there to meet him with a low pay, like a bullet through the air. Again, works incredibly hard, is extremely talented. Shelly's right. That momentum, Alan Angels took himself and the, and the champion damn near into the fourth row with that. Alex Shelley having a tough time regaining leverage. Alan Angels conversely really, really favoring that arm. We're only a few minutes into this one, Cody, and both of these athletes really worse for the wear. It speaks to how much the prestige wrestling world championship means to both of these men that this one has been all gas and no breaks. Dragon screw leg whip on the middle rope. Nowhere for that leg to go. And Shelley, look at that. He's readjusting the knee pad. He's hitting that leg. He's trying to, trying to get the pain out of there. But Easier. Alan Angels. Easier said than done after some offensive like moves like that. Alan Angels, he's on a roll whether you like it or not, Jordan. And Angels with a basement drop kick, wiping Shelly out. Now crunching that leg into the canvas. Step over, toe hold. Dropping it down and Fans in the front rows that are trying to get their seats back. It's in the ring. The champion is down, favoring that leg. And Alex Shelley. You know, I talk about feeling it. Talk about wrestling revolver Drexel just a few minutes ago issuing the challenge to Sammy Callahan. It's only a few months ago that Angels turned his back on prestige wrestling and joined forces with Sammy Callahan, aligned himself with the wrestling revolver. How can we have a world champion that doesn't even claim this promotion as his home? He doesn't even go here. Right now, go here or not, he is in firm control of the champion. Look at the, look at the face of Alex Shelley. He's down on the mat. He knows he couldn't get himself oh, back up. Small package trying to steal it. Nearly does, but only a two. From the defensive position, Alex Shelley proven he's still in this one. I think Alex Shelley may be looking for that border city stretch, grinding the elbow into Angel's shoulder. Wearing him down slowly but surely is the champ. Ooh, ooh. He's limping, Cody. I mean, he, he is, he's, 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 he's on one foot. Talk about a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. How about a one-legged man in a world championship match? From behind, Alan Angels looking for thievery of his own. Wait a minute, Angels locking in that modified clover leaf, almost single leg submission there, but Look at that, just has that leg bent in a position it's not supposed to go. And Shelly's only a few inches away from the rope, but when that leg has sustained as much damage as it very evidently has, inches feel like miles. His fingertips away, Cody, can he make it? Inching closer to freedom. Can he find sanctuary in that bottom rope, Jordan? And he does. But was it too oh, little too late? Alan Angel's holding on to the hold for as long as referee Brad Lee will a lot. He's got a five count. He worked it to four and a half. I think he was pretending he couldn't hear the referee right there, but yeah, I hate to give him credit, but that's it's an underhanded tactic, but it works. Angels is a great wrestler. In between the ropes, he is fantastic. Never gonna argue with that. He's just a horrible human being. Whoa. Right now, maybe getting some karmic justice. Shelly sending him outside the ring. Angels quick back in to meet him, but sent back to the other side. Shades of the Cascadia Cup. I thought he was going to join us on commentary for a second. Well, thank goodness. 
Shelly, though, gets that leg swept out from under him, oh. but does not go without a fight. Just sends Angels into the second row with a boot to the face. Yeah, really nasty landing. Those chairs here in the Hawthorne Theater, comfortable to sit in, not oh, yes. so comfortable to, to be sent careening into by the prestige wrestling world champion. Oh, ho, ho. well, Alex Shelley, maybe watching from behind the curtain. Well, uh, five on two out of Drexel's playbook. We often talk about how Alex Shelley is one of the greatest technical wrestlers of our time. Nothing technical about that. I think that was the most technical thing I've ever seen. Technically, he hurt him a lot. Again, wrenching at the injured arms of Alan Angels, but Angels able to reverse, sending Shelly headfirst, careening into the post. It's the dangerous part about trying moves like that, trying a strategy that involves the, the solid steel ring post. It can backfire just like that, and Alex Shelly's face is proof. Wait, Angels with that chair. And Alex Shelly stomping at the fingers of the front man again. Not technically a no disqualification match, but discretion of referee Brad Lee. He knows how personal this issue has been for damn near years now. He knows these fans want a decisive winner, letting some things, oh, wait a minute. Look well, at Shelly not letting anything slide here, maintaining the wrist control, but Angels with the kicks to the injured leg of Shelly doing everything he can to escape. But Shelly's still holding on to the arm of Allen Angels and sends him shoulder first into that chair. And Jordan, this has got to be it. Border City stretch, the same submission maneuver that has won Shelly countless championship matches. He's got a tap. And Angels is inching towards the bottom rope. Shelly trying to pull his opponent away from the ropes there, but Alan Angels, Angels finds it. Angels makes it. Angels makes it. You gotta, you gotta pay attention there. Look at Shelly quickly favoring that leg once again. And woulda, coulda, shoulda. Maybe if he didn't have so much damage done to it, he would have been able to apply that Border City stretch just a little bit stronger. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing, Cody. Was Shelly able to cinch in that hold with the usual level of strength, the usual level of tension? Well, no lack of strength or tension here. You can cut it with a knife. Shelly giving him another opening. Ooh. Spitting in the face of Allen Angels, the same way Angels is spit in the face of Prestige Wrestling, and Angels biting the head of the champion. Smart. I hate to give him credit, but that wasn't. Not gonna be able to think of too many smart ideas after his noggin just got clocked by a steel chair. A drop to hold may have just rocked the world of Allen Angels and Alex Shelley. Shelley was thinking shell shock, but Angels reverses, looking for a backslide. Kicks out the injured leg, shoulders down. No, no, using the no, no, no. So close, so close. We were milliseconds away from the darkest timeline, and now Alan Angels Wait. rushing referee Brad Lee, but Alex Shelley reversing the roll-up into a Border City stretch. John Jackie with the referee for a few seconds too long, and Alan Angels might be paying the price. Alan Angels rolls no. Shelley onto his shoulders. No. Jordan, my heart cannot take this. We are in deep, deep waters. Alex Shelley looking for the sliced bread, but nearly said Shelley careening it to the official. Rolling Shelley up. I don't think Bradley saw that low blow. But Shelley somehow, subway able to survive. Wow. The life was damn near sucked out of the room. Helen Angels just said, where's my belt? You're not the champion, pal. Helen won the damn championship yet. Yet being the key word there, because right now Angels has possession of that title. What's he thinking? Uh, Ref I know referee Bradley has played it really fast and loose here. Again, referee's discretion, but he's not going to let this slide. Nor should he. Now uh, Shelly ducks. Shelly now. DDT right on the title. Shelly retains. No. Shelly realizes he's got to keep up this momentum. 
He cannot let the frustration build. That was a very, very close call for Allen Angels, but this championship matchup continues. And Cody, I'll do you one better. Shelly realizes he has to put an end to this one quick. Super kick. Record. Shell, no. This time, Shelly lands the mark. Referee Bradley is down. This is not good. Huge she title shot. No. Angels calling for another ref. No. Not this way. At the last possible second, Shelly gets the shoulder up. Shelly survives. Alan Angels is not world champion, but he may be in a second. Angels wigs. No, no. Oh my God. to pass. Alan Angels is the front man of prestige wrestling. Cody. I, I don't know what to say. What is there to say? This awful, terrible, repugnant person, the worst I have ever met, now holds the richest prize in this company. Jordan, with a simple count to three, Prestige Wrestling has officially entered the darkest timeline. God damn it. Cody, Alex Shelley has been Prestige Wrestling World Champion since before I started working for this company. And since I started on the broadcast team here, every single Prestige event that I have called has featured Alex Shelley as our World Champion. I don't know what this company looks like without the Motor City Machine Gun holding the gold. Well, Jordan, drink it in because it looks like that. Alan Angel standing tall here in the Hawthorne Theater. And it pains me to say this as your new prestige wrestling champion. This is a dark, dark day to be from Portland, Oregon. This is a dark, dark day to love professional wrestling. I, I apologize, fans. I don't know what to say. I'm not gonna lie to you. Not, not exactly how I pictured winning this, but you know what? It was, uh, it was a lot, a lot better <laughs> than I had hoped. Yeah, Alex Shelley beat the shit out of me. He beat the absolute shit out of me. He was just throwing anything he could at me. Literally, throwing stairs, chairs, anything he could find, he was throwing it at me. Throwing me on tables, but you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Because I walked out with this title. And this is mine now. And this is gonna stay mine for as long as I breathe. And if there's anybody that thinks they can make me stop breathing anytime soon, I guarantee you, you can't. Because I'm Alan goddamn angels and I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> well, we still have some more action coming your way, Jordan. We gotta regain our composure, something much easier said than done. But these boys right here are giving me some hope. It's about time we got our titles back. No more talking, no more bullshit. It ends tonight, C4 up. I can't believe I'm saying this. The noise holds all the gold in prestige wrestling. There's still hope. However, it is.
is not a certainty, it is not a guarantee that that will remain a fact by night's end. Alex Shelley has fallen, but C4 for inaugural and two-time prestige wrestling tag team championship. Well, they, they can still save us. Maybe not the war, maybe the battle. Help me, C4, you're our only hope. But Hope might as well be Cody Chun's middle name. It was at the Cascadia Classic where he came through at the end, pulling through with that victory. Cody Chun always comes in clutch. Of course, C4 losing the prestige wrestling tag team titles to Sinner and Saint back at Roseland 7 to dubious circumstances. The interference of our... Don't say it are now prestige oh. wrestling world champion Allen Angels. But tonight is not enough to eke out a win, to sneak away with a victory. They need to do it twice. better way to get a decisive uh, victory or a decisive result than a two out of three falls match. Judas Icarus and Travis Williams I'm sorry, aligning themselves with Allen Angels. I, I'm, I'm shaking up fans, I apologize. Aligning themselves with Allen Angels and since then I mean, their careers have seen a massive upswing. We've always known how good they've been in the ring with the Motor City Machine Guns, in the ring individually as part of the Cascadia Wrestling Cup. But this new allegiance, this new trio, the noise, and seemingly the missing piece for them to capture championship gold and put money where their mouth has been. Judas Icarus scares me. I'm scared of a lot of things, Cody. I'm scared for the future of this company. Cool. Let's throw it to Evie Kiyoshi for the official ring introductions. Things are getting heated. Bell hasn't even rung yet, Jordan. We've seen a lot of animosity tonight between Jaden and Jordan Cruz, between Shelly and Angels. This one rivals the both. It's about a lot more than gold, Cody. A lot more than gold.
Devin Campbell trying to get between these athletes. Cody, he's in for a very, very long night. In this, our main event, a two out of three falls match for Prestige Wrestling Tag Team Championship Gold. Wow, the tension is absolutely out of this world. The intensity with both of these teams. Referee Devin Campbell showing us what's on the line here in our main event. One in, one out. I mean, Cody, it's fair to say that these two teams, these four men, they hate each other. This is not friendly competition. This isn't even disrespect or frustration. This is hatred, plain and simple. There'll be no Ring of Honor shows signs of respect here, no handshakes. And it's just gonna be fists flying, here we go. It is main event time in the Hawthorne Theater. The unthinkable may have come to pass. Allen Angels may be the world champion, but that doesn't mean the Norse have to hold all the gold. C4 could still become three-time prestige wrestling tag team champions. As you said, Cody, there's still hope. And right now, that hope is unleashing fury on Judas Icarus. Rosas now. Looking to put him up for the suplex. Cody Chun with the drop kick, and Icky is down on the mat. Hooks the leg. Kick out from Icarus, but a very close near fall very early. It's got to be getting under his skin. Being almost taken out in the opening moments of this matchup here. And the frequent tags now on display as C4 in control here. I guess that's the first tag. It's just hard to remember since that the opening of this matchup involved everyone in the ring just beat. The Cody, hell I think, out of I each think other. it's fair to say that neither one of us are, are at our best tonight. And, and you can understand why. We apologize, fans, but it's it's not something anyone here is fully processed. Again, we're gonna do our very best to bring you to the end of this broadcast. A spectacular two out of three falls matchup on tap. As Cody Chud cinches in the figure four leg lock on the born sinner. Cody Chun still holding. That's my guy. Cody says to bring another series of, oh. It took three stomps and a final one Jordan. to the face of Cody Chun. And finally, the figure four leg lock is broken. Yeah, Von Whistler, this looks he, ugly. He may have done some serious damage there. That, he, that foot came down right on the orbital bone. Like, if that's broken, the eye will swell. That'll mess with the vision of Cody Chun, the depth perception. It could be all downhill after just a vicious stomp to the face like that. Think about those drop kicks, those high flying cross bodies, those high lows. All of that's neutralized if the eye's not 100%. Right now, Cody Chun trying to use the height advantage for Judas Icarus. There you go, Cody. I think he was thinking leapfrog, but Cody Chun gaining a measure of revenge on the man who stomped on those eyes. And, and this one has just lost control, Cody. Absolute mayhem has broken out once again on the floor. All four members here just, oh. Yes, this has been a very personal issue. We saw it at the Cascadia Wrestling Cup. We saw it last time we were here at the Hawthorne at Alive, of course, when Sinner and Saint stole the prestige wrestling tag team titles from C4 back at Roseland 7. But I think it's fair to say that Allen Angels capturing the prestige wrestling world championship has lit a different kind of fire under the asses of all four of these men. This was personal before. If it were somehow possible, the stakes have been raised even higher. Damn right, on the floor, Cody Chun just taking Travis Williams out in the front row there. Guillermo Rosa's taking care of Icarus, sending him back in the ring, and once again, we are back to a one-on-one -on -one with these partners in their respective corners. I guess you can say control has been, our order has been restored at least momentarily as Icarus using his head as a weapon. Again, shades of the Cascadia Wrestling Cup, the Cascadia Classic, as you call it. Chun coming away victorious on that evening, hoping for the same result blind here tag. tonight. You have a blind tag from Williams and a basement drop kick. Fought up the knee to the back into the cover. Hooks the leg. Not enough. 
Sinner and Sane are not gonna let that happen easily. Just raining the fist into the face of classic Cody Chun. That dude, Triple C, he's gotta get out, he's gotta tag out. Chun is not looking so hot right now as that, it was just that one simple blind tag by Sinner and Saint that have just put him back in control of this one. Huge chop to the chest. And Travis Williams again, frequent tags. Name of the game. Double team maneuvers, very, very effective here. A stomp to the fingers and a stomp to the neck. Cover here from Icarus. And a kick out from Cody. Wow. Again, Von Whistler. I'll say the same thing about Sinner and Saint that I said about their noise cohort. The, the prestige wrestling world champion, Alan Angels. Oh, oh. Icarus bites the face of Cody Chun. Shades of their leader, shades of their cohort, Angels. They are fantastic wrestlers. Much like Angels, I will never argue or discredit their in-ring ability. That's not what's so frustrating. That's not, cover here. Did so you, it makes me so ashamed to have them as our champions. Did you see the just the, the almost hand-shaped mist of sweat that just flew off of the chest of Cody Chun? That was a huge chop by Judas Icarus. And Cody, we're only five minutes into this matchup, right? Roughly five minutes into this matchup. If that, if that's how hard these athletes are going, if that's how much adrenaline and energy they have exerted this early on, what are we in store for as Cody Chun springboards off the head toss, but lands face first into a stereo basement drop kick, leg hook by Williams, broken up by Rosas. I think Cody Chun was able to get the shoulder up there at the last second, but Rosas didn't want to play it safe, came in to make the save, gets sent to the floor for his troubles. Show some real desperation from Rosas. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Williams and Icarus looking to put the finishing touches on this one, but Guillermo Rosas saw it coming, grabbing Judas Icarus, pulling him to the outside. But Icarus setting Rosas face first into the post and in the ring, Cody Chun trying to neutralize the born sinner here. Takes Zicky down, but Travis Williams still in this one, gets the headlock applied, rolls through as Cody Chun. Side headlock takeover, but not locked in for too long, and these two are going at it. Despite, this far in a matchup, it is neck and neck. Despite the animosity, despite the aggression, cover here. Rolls it up. The traditional wrestling acumen does not fade. It uh, speaks to the caliber that they don't get sloppy as they get angry. Cody Cutter! Cody Cutter, but Jordan, I do not think Cody Chun saw the blind tag by Judas Icarus that happened moments ago. Travis Williams, not the legal man, and Chun only just now realizing it. Icarus steals the first fall. First fall. And just like that, Sinner and Saint are in the lead. The odds are now stacked in the favor of Judas Icarus and Travis Williams. I don't want to think it, but if they don't walk- Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. I got it, if they walk out of here victorious, the noise will be the most powerful team in prestige wrestling history. C4, in order to regain the prestige wrestling tag team titles, they now have to they now have to get back-to-back -back victories against Sinner and St. Chun chasing Icarus to the outside, now back inside the ring, but there to meet the legal man, Williams, just raining shots down, almost a Luthes press. Now have to get back-to-back -back victories. It is difficult enough to beat a team like Sinner and St. twice in one night. To do it back-to-back -back may be impossible, especially with double teams like this. Rosas leaving the opening for his partner to feel the brunt of the numbers game. Jordan, you know I hate playing devil's avocado, but Sinner and St. are on absolute fire right now. They have done a wonderful job of alienating classic Cody Chun from Guillermo Rosas. Cody Chun has just been on, on a receiving end of a beatdown from this team. Every single time Chun has the momentum back, Sinner and Saint just steal it. But Chun, I love the taste of my own foot. In comes Guillermo Rosas. Like a pistol, Guillermo Rosas firing away at the professional, taking him down to the canvas. He's short, but he is stocky. Hey! 
body drop. Rosa is the freshest member of all of all four of these combatants. And also the most intense, however fresh he may or may not be. That is a gas tank that does not run out quickly. We've seen that historically. They're insane, up and over, up and over. Non-stop action, and just like that, Sinner and Saint. Travis Williams taking Chud out of the equation. Icarus with a big knee, double tapping, sent to the outside with a big dive, and now the professional lariat. They're going to go back That's to back. It. One, two. No! Not yet. That was very, very close. Gonna steal your own words from the Cascadia Wrestling Cup. We mustn't lose hope. On that night, I was sure that Angels was gonna win the richest prize in the Pacific Northwest. We must keep our faith. We mustn't dwell, not today. Not on a live two day. As Travis Williams just wrenching at the fingers, jabbing away at the back of Rosas. He's so good, I hate it. Travis Williams just knows how to bend you in ways you're not supposed to go and knows how to force his way into those holds. Those rib shots are brutal enough, and now look at that, just digging the knuckles into the, into the midsection there, at least momentarily. He is a professional. He lives up to the nickname, does Travis Williams. Once upon a time, he was the golden boy, but now the professional, one half of the prestige tag team champions just laid him out with a big back elbow, but that was not enough. Rosas getting the shoulder up and Devin Campbell warning Travis Williams there about the handful of hair. Well, much like Ooh. new prestige wrestling world champion Alan Angels, he doesn't have any. There's no hair to pull for Travis Williams. Of course he has no empathy. In comes Icarus, again, frequent tags, great tag team. That's the signifier of as much. Lateral press and a kick out from Rosas. A bit of a lax to cover. Now hooking the leg, still not enough. I think Icarus is trying to get in the head of Guillermo Rosas. I think he successfully has. He knew that those pinfall attempts were not gonna secure the victory. On the off chance that they did, that's a bonus. But right there, he just forced his opponent to kick out to use more and more energy than he needed to, but I think it's safe to say Rosa still has some fight left in him, or at least he did before that big kick by Judas Icarus. Listen to the sound of those chops. Icarus still in control, but those were nasty, gnarly chops from Guillermo Rosas, who now hung out to dry the numbers game of Sinner and Saint, really, really wearing down on the man. Rosas as far away from Sanctuary as he can be in the enemy corner as Sinner and Saint are doing the frequent tags and it's all legal right now. They are perfectly working for, for once. They are working within the rules here. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the last time that C4 and Sinner and Saint squared off here in the Hawthorne Theater was back at Alive in a trios tag team match that also included Sonico and our new prestige wrestling oh, world champion, Alan Angels. My, my point, Cody, is that it was C420. It was C4 and Sonico. Cover here from Williams, staring daggers through Chun as he goes for it. Thankfully, a kick out from Rosas. My point being that C420 picked up the victory on that, on that occasion, excuse me, at least here at least in this building, and they, they have up, some measure of momentum. They picked up that victory with, on, on that occasion with the equation being Sonico, the third member of the team. The Lucha Ghoul, a very loose cannon, a wild card, if you will. Very hard to predict what Sonico is going to bring to the table, but tonight it's two on two. C4, There's... Guillermo Rosas getting the boots up, now trading forearms with Judas Icarus. Okay, Rosas. There's no match for the power of Guillermo. Reaching for that tag, but Judas Icarus deceptively powerful, doing everything he can to stop it from happening. Rosas ducks the chop, one of his own grabbed by Icarus, and a stomp to the feet. One for the fingers. Huge headbutt, both combatants rocked, but oh! Judas Icarus was going for the lighthouse lariat. Guillermo with one of his own. This time lands the mark. 
Damn near took his head off with that one. And Guillermo Rosas, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. This is your moment. He's got to get Chun in this. But Jordan, look how far away he is. This is the type of the match, or this is the moment in the match where an inch is a mile. And it's make or break right now for Guillermo Rosas. As far as I'm concerned, there's no way he can keep fighting. I hate to underestimate the man. I hate to count him out. But Chun needs in now. But Icarus much closer to Williams Cody. Who's gonna get it? Rosas gets it. Icarus gets it. Okay. Cody Chun. Picture perfect drop kick to Williams. One for Icarus. He's heating up. Chun with a splash in the corner. Another one. From downtown, Cody Chun. He's coming alive. Big jab. Flurry of south pods here from Chun. Usually follows this up with winding it up into that elbow, but instead, one for Williams. Sikes him out into the DDT. Made you look at the map. The inaugural Cascadia Wrestling Champion, and you're seeing why. Cody Chun looking to score the first fall for C4. Cody Chun has Travis Williams up. Rosas winds up. Assisted sit out power bomb. The board is even. Now, can you dig that sucker? You know, I'd say don't hate the player, hate the game. Tonight, I'll make an amendum. Don't hate the player, hate the noise. I believe uh, we are at a sudden death here. One and one, both C4 and Sinner and Saint have a point on the board, but it might be over here for Travis Williams. Hi, low. We got new tag team champions. Count of three, three time champs, damn it. Cutting it close, Judas Icker is coming through with that save at the last second now, sending Cody Chun to the floor. Judas, Icky thinking about flying. Oh no, a baseball slide. Damn, right to the face of Chun. Icarus back in the ring. Back full of turnbuckle. Guillermo Rosas managed to get out of dodge. Not able to have the same luck with that kick or those chops to the back, rolling through into a big knee to the neck. Damn. This is not where you want to be on the receiving end of a huge momentum build by Judas Icarus. What a Superman punch takes Rosas down. Now Williams back in, making the tag to Icarus. There we go. These guys knowing exactly who is the legal. Lighthouse Lariat! Uh -oh. We might be moments away from a victory for Sinner and Saint here, but Rosas not going down without a fight. Big stutter from Icarus. No, no. Sends Rosas into the waiting feet of Williams, a man who just returned from an excursion to Germany with a German suplex. But Rosas survives. Yes. Yes. Referee Devin Campbell said it was close, but no cigar as this tag team championship matchup, our main event here at Prestige Alive 2 continues, and Judas Icarus just, just got sent right to that solid steel post. Cody, my heart is beating a mile a minute. It is thumping, man. I'm sweating bullets. This, this, is, this is unlike anything I've ever seen. Right now, Travis Williams left alone in the ring with Cody Chun. Hatred, plain and simple. These two are quite literally just kicking each other directly in the face. Neither man will go down. 
That is what the prestige wrestling tag team titles mean. That is what the sanctity and purity of prestige wrestling seven years worth of history means. Neck and neck, both these combatants know each other's next step. No! Almost. Judas Icarus pulling the rope and Cody Chud with a nasty spill to the outside. You see how hard Cody hit his side on the, on the apron there? Oh, oh, wait a minute, Williams looking to steal it. Added leverage from Icarus, but referee Devin Campbell sees it. Rosas rolling through into a cover with his own, but Williams survives. Wow, the underhanded tactics of Sinner and Saint almost cost them the tag team titles. But Super kick from Cody Chun. Nicely done by classic Cody Chun, but Travis Williams, single leg takedown. Sweeps the legs. Rolling through, what's he going for here? Yeah, Cody, something that Cody Chun wanted no part of. Ow, gnarly elbow to the face of classic Cody Chun. Big kick. Again, looking for the German suplex, but Cody a little too tall. This time pops over. Little miscommunication between Sinner and Saint. Double Cody Cutter! Yeah, man! That's right! Allons-y! The third round wow. of this two out of three falls warfare. And C4 could be closing in on their third raid as prestige wrestling tag team champions. And the straps are down for a second time. And that might signify the third title reign for C4. Williams laid out. But Alan Angels, the prestige wrestling world champion, Robin referee Devin Campbell. God damn it, Devin. Judas Icarus with the tag team title. But Icky's trying to direct traffic here. And Williams doesn't know where he is right now. And, and Rosas clearly sees it. So does Chun. Stopping him dead in his track. And now Cody Chun sliding the title to Guillermo Rosas. Saying if Sinner and Saint want to play dirty, so can C4. Straps come down once again. And C4 fighting an internal battle. Are they going to do it? Rose, I don't think Rosas wants to, but Chun is imploring him. Cody Chun has had enough. I don't blame him. Chun says if, if Rosas won't do it, Cody Chun will, but... Cody Chun doesn't get the opportunity. Oh. Chun just hit the stage no, on his whoa. way down. Whoa, whoa, blow, whoa, blow, stop. Rosas grabbed it before it could land. But Icarus follows through. Icarus finishes the job. An assisted low blow by Sinner and Saint. Rosas up. Rosas down. Please, please, come on, please, please, please. Oh. Shit. The noise rule prestige wrestle. Those who hold the championships hold the power. They said they were sick and tired of veterans hogging and stealing the spotlight. The spotlight firmly lying on these three men. Your tag team champion, Sinner and Saint. Your world champion, Allen Angels. Not only was there interference from the new world champion, you saw the mind games come into play and you saw them work. You saw Cody Chun dip to the level of the noise. 
something he's not used to. And we saw that backfire on C4. this company. It means more to me than I could ever possibly hope to articulate. For the first time ever, I am truly and genuinely scared for the future of prestige wrestling. Don't look at me. Don't look at us. I don't want to see it. Yeah. I know I'm uh, kind of brought on here as the color, kind of the comic relief, but I got nothing right now, dude. I got nothing. The noise has been made. Prestige wrestling will never be the same. We did it, boys! We did it, boys! The champs are here. Look at that. Look at this gold. You better call us good Christian boys now because we stick to our word every goddamn time. We said C4 couldn't hang, and they could not hang. Ain't no hang. Huh? When things got desperate and things got dire, C4 was nowhere to be found. And our job here, our job here is finished. Oh, you're right, actually. We did very well. Pat yourself on the back, right, boys. Right. We did huh? very, very well. What else we got to prove here, huh? Remember when y'all didn't goddamn want us? What about now, huh? You want us out, Roseland? Too fucking bad. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't need go. to go. Y'all don't need to go. Y'all been yeah. defending your tag team titles. Y'all okay. been doing a great job. I think you guys deserve a well-deserved break. Uh, yeah. How's that sound? I'll take that one. You know what? Uh, you know what? I'm sending you boys to Vegas. You guys are going to Vegas. Y'all are going to Vegas yeah. at, you know, on Roseland. I think I am going to go. I'm not going to go with you guys to I'll Vegas. I think I'm going to hang out at Roseland and um, have a little bit of a championship celebration oh. for my new prestige world yeah. championship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, tell me what you guys think about this. I'm yeah. going to have the first ever live edition of the sound check. How's that sound? That sounds cool, right? I actually, love that show. Actually, Are you actually, in Portland? I got, a, I got a better idea. We're in Portland, so why don't we rename it, just for this one time, Piper's Pit. Piper's Pit. The first ever live edition of Piper's bad. Pit at <laughs> Roseland. What do y'all think about that? Yeah, I never heard that oh. before. Yeah, that's a good name. That's a good name. <laughs> that's a that's good awesome. name. Like I said, you can call us whatever you want. Assholes, doesn't matter. Now you gotta call us champions. And these champions, we're going out. We're going out, we're going to celebrate, boys. Let's go. Let's get it. Hey, hey. you later, boys. Hey, 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 hey,